Um, good evening, uh, Commissioner Tolson. Good evening, Commissioner Nelson. Good evening, Commissioner Jackson. It's really good to see you guys all on tonight. This might be a long night, y'all. We'll see. Because <laughs> we are going to go through the summary guide and we have a, a points of other things that we need to discuss. Um, it's my intent to go through the summary guide as quick as possible uh, while making sure that we hit on the things that we need to talk about. Ms. Warner Wiggins, I'm going to allow you to guide us through that. I'm, I'm going to open with the thing. Let me just open. Um, <laughs> uh, do I have a motion to um, open the meeting? I move that we open the meeting at six. Okay. Can I get a second, please? Second. All right. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Aye. 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 Cool beans. Uh, so uh, again, we have our, um, okay. We have our, um, oh, hey, Commissioner Diane. We have our agenda and we're gonna be reviewing the summary guide as well as the public contact sheet, communication strategy, the letter of support and future meeting schedule. Um, I'm gonna let Ms. Warner Wiggins give a brief introduction to the summary guide, put it up and then we'll start. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry for being late. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is everyone able to see the guide? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so we can go through this fairly quickly. Um, I just wanted to give everyone the opportunity to um, to view it. Um, it is um, essentially um, edited or adapted from Montgomery <clears throat> County Summary Guide. Um, because in a lot of, especially the mechanics of the program are, are fairly, um, similar. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, this first page here, um, I will need to be updated. I believe, um, is Mr. Demarinas now the administrator? Um, this will need to be updated. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so that would need to be updated. Uh, of course the date. Um, the table of contents would need to be updated. Um, I didn't touch that until every the content is is set. Um, just scrolling down here. Um, and essentially what this is, this is going to be the primary resource um, yeah. for anyone interested in learning more about the program. Mm -hmm. um, it starts with mm -hmm. just kind of um, some uh, general information about um, it starts with, and this is this is again using Mon what Montgomery County has included, um, mm -hmm. the state history around public financing, um, and then some information about Prince George's County's um, uh, start of the program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, moving down, it um, there's some language around the Fair Election Fund Commission. Um, how it was established, some of the re requirements for commissioners, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, both in terms of who the members must be and the requirements for the commission in terms of meeting and, and, and some other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, where the funding comes from, it just talks about the fund. Um, and this is straight out of the, the legislation, where the funding comes mm -hmm. from. So mm -hmm. nothing, nothing new there. So these important terms and definitions, this also comes straight out of the um, the legislation mm -hmm. as well. So these mm -hmm. are all of the terms, important terms that are listed in the legislation. Mm -hmm. um, and then this kind of gives the, um, the 2026 election cycle. Um, and so essentially we have a qualifying period um, that takes us until um, and for this particular election cycle, take us until May 16th. Um, so essentially, this is the period of time where someone could qualify for the program. Mm -hmm. uh, and, then, um, and that lines up to uh, when someone would need to file for candidacy uh, mm -hmm. for the Board of Elections um, um, and apply for sort of the <clears throat> state board. Could, could I ask a question here? Because mm -hmm. our legislation requires people who have spent a certain amount who already have, you know, the 
things we've been going through, we already have a campaign account and have spent a certain amount to actually, they have a shorter window mm -hmm. to register. So should that also be on this, um, on this uh, view graph? Uh, we could we could include that in there um, right because that's pretty short it's uh it ends next month so maybe we should somehow refer to the legislation and explain what that is and put that in here okay okay that have open accounts okay and also keep in mind um that this will be um kind of a, a document that hopefully i mean some of these dates of course will change but um, a lot of this should stand um, in terms of over years. Um, there may be some amendments made, but overall the bulk of it should stand over time um, in terms of just the mechanics of the program. Yeah. Uh, a quick question about that. Yes. Uh, so that, in, that entire period from January 23 mm -hmm. to 516, is the qualifying period for the primary election 630? Right. Mm -hmm. And then, so what is the, the, the 7 one date? The next column that doesn't have anything over the top? That one so that's just, um, yeah, the 7 one, that's just the start of the, the 2020 um, seven fiscal year. So it's just the start of a new fiscal year. Um, but that's the point um, where at the beginning of each fiscal year, um, the Office of Finance has to determine whether there are sufficient funds available um, to meet whatever the expectation is for who will be participating in the program. And if, July. if finance determines that there are insufficient funds, um, then uh, the legislation allows the director of finance to reduce um, the distributions by whatever that percentage would be. Gotcha. And then 11 18, I'm, assure, I'm assuming, is the election date? Yes. Um, so, no, that's the last day to get um, distributions out of the fund. So, actual election is November um, 3rd. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And then, basically, essentially, someone participating in the program can receive submit receipts through the 18th to be real. Um, Commissioner Tolson brings up a good point. I kind of feel like if if we're asking questions about it, maybe there should mm -hmm. be some language on there just for anyone else. So mm -hmm. maybe just putting like the fiscal year and then like last date of distribution okay. um, for those yeah. two parts. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank, so, thank you uh, both. Yeah, so I'll just, um, yeah, heading, I'll just say heading, heading, heading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, that'll remind me. Okay. Okay. All Thank right, you. and then again, just some more language again, what is the notification period, um, receipt submission period, um, and then I'll, so I'll fill in this information to find a filing the notice of intent. Um, this is uh, where we decided that the notice of intent should line up with the um, filing for candidacy, the final date to file for candidacy. Um, and this is um, just kind of mechanics of actually how to become certified. Um, and so it requires the committee to um, register in MD Chris. So a lot of this is, is happening on the state side. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why um, pretty much no matter what jurisdiction is, is has a public financing program, this part is going to look pretty much the same. So this I is appreciate it. I appreciate the adding of those pictures of the website as well. And um, I cannot claim um, credit for that <laughs> <laughs> at all. Um, but yes, it is helpful for people to be able to see mm -hmm. yes, where to click. Um, so all of this is just pure mechanics. What you click on, what you have to fill in, Yeah, um, the state board approvals, on how to edit things. So this is all about um, kind of just how to work in within ND Chris and what the state requires as well. Um, so then this is where we um, get into kind of how you become qualified. Um, so these are the requirements. You need at least 500, example for county executive, at least 500 contributions for aggregate of at least 40,000, et cetera. 
Miss um Miss Warner Wiggins. Yes. I, just just a note. I I have the other document up here. I feel like some of the things that you highlighted that you wanted us to talk about. Mm -hmm. I feel like we should address that as you're going through. And I think the first okay. thing that you had said was. Um, the commission may want to consider whether other information should be required for each recipient. Okay. And that is for the, yeah. the, the, um, for the receipts. Yeah. Uh, the receipts. So yes. did you want me to read that out or you got it? Either way is um, fine. Yeah, let's see here. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of what we may, mm -hmm. but this is kind of what is generally required for a receipt. Um, the contributor's name, residential address, and it must be signed by the contributor. Um, directly or by digital signature. Um, if it is a digital signature, it can't be just um, a check mark. The um, individual would have to do something um, to affirmatively <clears throat> say that they agree. So maybe that's typing their name in or something like that. Um, they can't just check something saying, you know, I agree to make this donation. Um, so whether we want to consider other information. Um, on the receipt, um, for example, so I've, I've spoken with the state board, um, an example of something we may want to consider would be um, some type of attestation that the individual is a um, U.S. citizen um, or permanent <laughs> resident, something saying that they are a resident of Prince George's County. Um, and the reason for that is um, there are some situations um, that have come up, um, such as college students. If you have um, someone who is in college in another state, um, but claims Prince George's County residency, um, would that person be considered a resident? The opposite as well, someone who whose family or came from a <clears throat> state but goes to a um, university in Prince George's County, would that person be considered a resident? I would think we would use the license maybe to determine that. I well, think, yeah, I think she's, get, well, Ms. Warner Wiggins, I don't want to cut you off, but I think she's given an example um, and so subsequently, we can decide, uh, Commissioner Tolson, mm -hmm. if we wanted to use the license, if we wanted to say, hey, uh, it's whatever is registered to your license. Um, that's interesting because uh, I actually just had this conversation uh, with someone in regards to voting and their mm -hmm. registration and things like that. So here's the question, Commissioner Tolson. I think you brought up a good point. Should we go by their license or should we go by the registration on their voter ID? I would ask, what do other counties do? Um, I don't know if there is um, consistency with that, um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it has come up as an issue. Um, and the and along those lines, what if someone is not registered to vote, and what if someone does not have um, a license and they're not in the NBA database, and they want to still be able yeah. to, to and they, contribute? And, and I mean, I would ask the right? state What's because. That? I mean, I would ask the state because the state is, in the end, the entity that is sort of running the program for everybody. What does the state board of elections think? I mean, what what, go by what, is the, what? Yeah, what is the intent from their end? They go by what is included in the report. So if the so essentially all these receipts are collected by the candidate and entered into MD Chris. If the candidate says the person's um, Prince George's County resident, then that's what the state will use. I guess, hmm. I guess the other part, I feel like you brought up a good point. I guess the other part of it would be um, the general question, can people So do we want to restrict this to Prince George's County residents as the people that are contributing? And I feel like the answer would be yes, because this is the fair election fund for Prince George's County residents. So that's the first question that we need to answer, yes or no. And they can contribute. Well, I would think the way the, way the program's structured, they can contribute. The question will be around the matching dollars piece of it. Mm -hmm. I thought they might could. have family members who want to contribute who don't live locally. Uh, and I wouldn't think you should be penalized for who gives you money. 
you can receive the money. It's just a matter of would it be matched. Right. So that's the question. Uh, hi, this, I is, this is Commissioner Williams. I believe I read something where it said that they could contribute. They Maybe. can. It's just a matter of would the money be matched. Right. Okay. So anyone who's a U.S. citizen or permanent resident can contribute. It doesn't matter right. where they live. Exactly. Uh, if would the funds be matched? The the way the legislation's written, only funds um, contributed by a Prince George's County resident um, would be matched. So right now we're trying to uh, um, decide um, for an additional requirement for the receipts to track the matching funds, and we're just trying to decide whether or not that should be tied to a license, um, like a like some sort of identification card or some other requirement. I mean, what's um, the definition of resident in general? I'm sorry? I said, what is the definition of resident? Uh, um, someone who resides in Prince George's County. Right, so for tax purposes or just, you know, I mean, if you're a student with coming from out of state. But what, you have to claim residency somewhere. Right. So if that if that if that student claims residency in Montana, can they really claim? I mean, they live here. Don't get me get me wrong, but can they? You, uh, in my understanding, you can claim residency in one place. I would think voter registration would be the ideal uh, right that we would use. But, but if they're matching not a voter, but, if you're a permanent resident, you're not a voter, but you can contribute. Right. I think we might have to, I agree that the voter ID card would be a good idea, but I think from the other caveat of what if you are not a right. registered voter, but you are a resident and we want to make right. sure that your contribution is tracked. So it might have to be um, an ID or here's the other part. Go, go ahead. Go, yeah. Go ahead. Could we use go ahead. Could we that's use also, yeah, we could use, yeah, that's not. I Ooh, think you're the moving. Identification of Prince George's mm -hmm. County and voter registration, if they would, don't have one or the other. Yes, I think you're moving to where I was going to. Uh, uh, I was about to call you Dr. Williams. I think you move it. You probably are, uh, but I think you're moving to where I was going, Commissioner Williams. I think we should have a or, but I'm also, and I'm glad the um, the attorney is on. I guess I would want to know. <laughs> And this is just from my point of reference. I know when you register your kids for school, you have to provide a bill or a deed or something like that. And mm -hmm. so what if you don't have, you know, an ID for whatever reason and you're mm -hmm. not registered to vote mm -hmm. for whatever reason, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, would we accept an alternative form of proof of residency? And this is a question for everybody. Like this isn't, I'm asking the attorney if we could do right. it, but I'm also saying I would love for the, com the commission's feedback. Commissioner Tolson, you look like you wanted to say something. You have to have to, by law, you have to have a light. You have to have an ID, correct? You can't not have ID. I, I'd have to look at that whether Is that whether correct? whether that you would have to have an ID per se. You don't um, have to, uh, because I'm sure there do. are people here that live in the county that don't have a driver's license, or maybe you don't even have a state issued ID. Yeah, so, I, I think mean, that that's, that's 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 been an issue. Um, it's, so uh, as far as the legislation itself, of course, is silent as to what the requirements of a uh, being a county resident. It just says a county resident. Um, can I ask uh, attorney attorney Maddox? Can I ask a quick question to Commissioner Tolson? Commissioner okay. Tolson, are you saying are are you saying that it's a requirement? It's a state requirement to have an ID period over a certain age. Is that what you're saying? Are you saying there's a? Yeah, I thought. I think even kids have to have ID. I just that, traveled no. with an infant. They had ID. <laughs> they don't. No, no. I don't. I don't. That's not a. Because actually, that's been the if big a cop, thing if with. A, if an officer stops you and you can't say who you are, they can take you in. You have to have ID. No, what what I'm no, saying is this. No. This yeah the 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 issue of state uh, ID and all that stuff has been the subject of many a legislature, state legislature, as to what qualifies as a resident. And I know that that is very restrictive if you're going to just stick to uh, a state issued ID, because like I said, some people don't have them, but that doesn't mean they're not a resident of that area. Yeah. 
So, no. for example, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Attorney Maddox. No, go ahead. I know you about to you about to give us the whole. <laughs> no, bag. actually, but... no. I was I was actually um, kind of interested in exploring that whole, you know, a bill or something of that nature because that's mm -hmm. an alternative that uh, could verify your residency. I think. Yes. So, so a couple I could just say out there, but the one thing we have to keep in mind is that the this the information we get on matching is going to come out of ND create Chris. Right. It's going to be as a county person or a state person checking this documentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if there's additional documentation required, it would be the candidate. We'd be asking the candidates to check it. Right. To verify it. So just right. something to keep in mind, whatever extra steps are taken would be something the candidate would be doing, not us. Right. So a couple so a couple of things. I know it's not our intent to disqualify someone from being able to contribute. I know that's mm -hmm. not our intent. And mm -hmm. I want to be very careful that we align ourselves with with what our intent is. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, um, Commissioner Tolson, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Um, having worked in the system of and the school system, the the ID thing is not is not a requirement. Um, and then even just outside of that, I think there are people who have IDs. Like you, you know, once you get into high school, you might have an ID. Sometimes in middle school, it depends on the middle school. But after, under a certain age, it's not a requirement to have an ID. And I'm bringing that up from the context of moving to adulthood. There are many people that don't have IDs. They right. use proof of residency as in regards to a bill, like, a, mm -hmm. like an electric bill or um, a phone bill. They right. use their actual lease or they use their... But you, like the, the DMV would not accept that as proof of residence, residency. I think voter registration, we would, correct? Well, we're... The, for, yeah, Department of Motor Vehicles you would actually be getting a license at that point. I mean, right. you have to show something, correct? To, I mean, to get one. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, but one of the things that you would have to show is not just a bill, but you would have to show like, I guess, your lease or like a, like a mortgage or something like that. And so I think to my point is we can ask, I see your hand, commissioners, to teach you, I'm coming to you. We can ask for an or, like mm -hmm. your driver's license, or. your voter registration card, or some additional proof of residency. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, the goal is to just not not try to cut someone out of their ability. Um, but we'd have to kind of figure out what the additional proof of residency is. I, you know, um, yeah. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, mm -hmm. isn't there uh, the people that do the at, at, uh, contributions, do they do an attestation document or a document where they attest that Yes, I'm a resident of Prince George's County. We can add, we can make that a requirement. On the See, that's, yeah. that's what I, that's yeah. what I think may mm -hmm. be a curative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then let's do the attest, attestation. We can vote on this. I see commissioners to teacher and commissioner Dan. So let me get them. Um, but we can add the attest, attestation with the or of the, um, the or of the voter registration and the driver's license. I'm sorry uh, for the wait, uh, commissioners to teacher. Yeah, I wanted to say that I think, um, I mean, we want to make this very clear because from the candidate's point of view, when they submit these um, signatures in, I think they're given one shot to correct. And then if not, this this lot gets chucked out. I mean, I know that's been a problem in some counties. So we want to be very clear that every candidate, I mean, we want to be very clear in what what is accepted. We want to be very clear that the state understands what we are accepting in our legislation, in our manual, and we want the candidate to know so that, you know, we don't want to shortchange candidates because some I was not dotted or T was not crossed in the correct way. So right. I just want to make that kind of... Commissioner Smith? Yeah, I was wondering, do we... What do we need to decide today? I wonder if could we sort of adopt a draft language here? I mean, we're talking about residency. So the matter is just going to be, what is the proof? And I guess part of my question is who is, who do, who has to prove to whom? So is the proof to the candidate committee, you know, this is accepting the contribution or does the proof actually have to transfer to the state 
Well, so whoever along the way is going to kick it out. I, I'll and, tell and, you this: whoever, uh, with respect to the public financing, whoever decides what's going to be the matching is going to be the decider as to residency, because that's a crucial factor. Like you said, uh, uh, the person uh, as a resident, uh, that's the match. They're going to match those, those contributions from county residents. Those who are not, that doesn't mean they can't contribute. What it means is it won't be matched. It won't be a qualifying one for the okay. public financing. So that's the, that's the entity, whoever that is, that's going to uh, decide on the matching. And, and so could we just put in like tentatively, but do a little bit more research and asking around and get affirmation from, from the state, if that's helpful to uh, exactly the language we put in there? I would agree with that. I would just say that, remember, uh, for all of us to keep into consideration, we are under a time crunch. I know um, some of the commissioners, all the commissioners know about like this timeline that we have to let people know, to make sure people are aware. And the summary guide, I feel like would do would go a, a large way into making sure that people had information. So mm -hmm. I'm fine with like including draft language as long as everyone's in, in, uh, in agreement of what we're putting in there and mm -hmm. then getting more information to verify so that we can kind of solidify this within a week or so. Um, so teacher, you still have your hand up. Just quickly, so uh, what is the procedure? I mean, do candidates submit everything to the state and the state weeds out which ones will get matched? Or does the candidate do the sorting and only submit those that are, um, uh, you know, that, that will be matched? So only those of residents. No, so the candidate would upload any receipts for any donations from anybody. Um, into the MD Chris system, but when they're uploading their receipts, there's essentially they're checking off a box saying that this is a contribution that qualifies for a match. So they're and, yeah, they're, and if they make too many mistakes, then something gets thrown out. I know this has happened to some candidates in Montgomery County, so I just want to be careful. Um, by just... mistakes, you mean checking in saying yeah, check are residents who aren't or right. Yeah, I mean, that would be the kind of thing. Um, so if the state is somehow able to determine that someone who was designated as a resident isn't, um, mm -hmm. then the state would have the ability to say that does not qualify for a match. Now, whether there's repercussions beyond that right. would be up to the county to decide if, if, if someone who continually makes mistakes, um, if, if there's going to be consequences to that, that would be something we would have to decide. But from the state's perspective, um, they're they're going to review what was uploaded, um, including um, whether or not the candidate um, has indicated that this is a contribution that's eligible for a match. So for instance, if someone, if there is a contribution that is eligible for a match, but the candidate doesn't say it is, then that will not be matched. So the state's not going through and, and checking to see if they, if they right. check correctly or not. So, um, but if, now what I have heard though, is that generally speaking, um, if, so they don't, their system doesn't have, at least not currently, as, as far as I'm aware, any kind of geo mapping data. And mm -hmm. so they're not going to look and see, like you think a place like Laurel, wait a minute, that part of Laurel's Howard County it's not matched. Like they right. don't, they're not going to be yeah, able to do that. that. They're relying on the candidate um, right. to to confirm. And so on our side, what we can request is that part of the receipt at least have that attestation so that if we're going back and reviewing, we can say, well, the person said they're a resident. Um, right. That will at least allow us to do some some type of due diligence. Uh, right. Now, now, answer me this, Jacqueline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, do, do you all have any, um, I want to say stock language, dealing mm -hmm. with attestation since you all deal with sometimes uh, people that, you know, for maybe tax purposes or things like that. Do you have any language? We might. Um, okay. I'll check with our, um, I'll check with our accounts payable and our yeah. staff and see if they have something. So just something we could start yeah. off with and yeah. kind of, kind of, uh -huh. kind of, tailor it to our situation. Okay. I'd appreciate it. Sure. 
Yep, I could certainly do that. So um, I just, um, I, I'll check with the state. I'm not sure if 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 there's even a, a system for uploading proof of residency. So if we say, yep, they have to show ID or the, you know, or this other thing, um, how that information would be shared to anyone besides the candidate, I don't know. Because right. I don't know if, I mean, if they're out on the street collecting checks, mm. are you going to expect them to be like, well, show me your, you know, your your light bill to right. the Prince George's County resident. So we have right. to, so logistically, we have to think about, right. um, also we have to think about that there's no, currently the way the law is written, there's no requirement that the person be 18. So you can have a 14 year old. Yeah, you know, you know? it's it's interesting. Um, when I was looking at that, I was looking at one of the things to actually um, as possible amendments mm -hmm. in that section because I did notice it didn't have the uh, eighteen-year-old requirement. I mean, requirement of being eighteen years of age. Um, but like I said, this with respect to this, the requirement uh, or what determines residency does yeah. not have to be in the legislation itself. Mm -hmm. It can be in the summary guide. Right. I do think. Um... Uh, to your point about people being out and collecting checks, I know like if you're out and you're getting a petition to put something on a on a bill or something like that, you have to get a full address. If mm -hmm. you wanted something to go on for um, like a recall or anything like that, you can have a full address. So from my perspective, I, I kind of know like if you're out there collecting checks, you can have a little piece of paper and you can yeah. have something that says their address as well as check marking you saw um uh, and, you, and you may and you even have carry, a, and you may even have an attestation document there. Right, you can carry the mm -hmm. attestation document. So that for me is kind of like mm, mm -hmm. not, not That's really a catch all. Yeah, mm -hmm. particularly when people are knocking doors. People knock doors and they no. Nah. Right. That that's fine. So are we as a commission okay with adding the language about the attestation and the and or about the driver's license slash uh, voter registration card? Yeah. Yes. I yes. Am. I, yeah, I, I am too. I just okay. need to get clarity. Is it my understanding that we have no responsibility on identifying proof or non-proof? We we don't. That, okay, that's <laughs> not that's, that's the fair. That's, 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 that's not our role. So okay. you may want you may want to make a motion. <laughs> oh yeah. To okay. A motion and then the vote. And yes. Okay. Can I have a motion to accept that link that change to the summary guide, please? I move. So move. Okay. Second. 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 All in favor, aye. 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 So, okay. so the the it's either proof of voter registration or a valid state ID. Mm -hmm. Is what's mm -hmm. going to be required. Okay. And the attest, like I guess, or attestation, or or, or, or attestation, or an attestation. Okay. Um, saying that they're a resident. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of Prince George's okay. County. Yes. Okay. Prince George's County. Okay. <laughs> When we draft that up, may someone send that to the commissioners because I've never heard of that. So I'd like to see what it is. But I, I don't, it's fine. I just like to see. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. All right. So then we can move on to the next part. I just wanted to make okay. sure that we we were capturing when yes. um, I had saw in there that you had some certain certain language that we were supposed to address. Yes. Um. um so here I just have some notes. Um, so I know there was some desire to know how our our program is different from Montgomery and Howard counties. Um, right. That's just what these notes are about, showing mm -hmm. the difference. Um, again, this is just information about what counts as a qualifying contribution. And that's just from the legislation. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm sorry, say that again, Jacqueline, I'm sorry. This this language up here is just um, indicating what counts as a qualifying contribution. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so basically, let me take the uh, markup off. <laughs> okay, of course. Let up. Yeah, yeah. Let's say. Qualifying contribution. Yeah. Let's see. I took the notes away and changed my place. Uh, let's see here. 
contribution limit. Here we go. So, okay, yeah. so this is it, basically a qualifying contribution, um, no more than two hundred fifty dollars. Um, it's given after the qualifying period and no later than the next general election made by a county resident and then acknowledged by receipt. Um, so then we, this is where, um, uh, this is just typos. This is where we would have to add in, um, that it's identifies the name, residential address, date of contribution signed by the contributor and is also accompanied by, um, proof of residency essentially. So that would be added um, as um, one of the requirements for a qualifying um, right. contribution. Um, and then here we have eligible contributions. Um, oh, this is the part that we uh -huh. talked about. We had that discussion around. Um, is it the 6,000 each? candidate and spouse or one or the other uh, for a total of 12,000. I thought we said that it's each individual. Okay. I thought I thought that was. Yeah. I think it's each individual because it was okay. changed from the 2018 legislation. Right, right. Okay. One or the other. And this is, so the, so the change mm -hmm. is that may not be that, that clear in the language, but I think it is meant to mm -hmm. be. Right. So, and the loan as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then again, the receipt. And um, let's see. So um, again, contributions in general don't have to be from county residents, just qualifying contributions. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then here's just list of items that are impermissible. So um, the contributions essentially have to come from an individual, can't come from an organization, right. uh, business. Mm -hmm. Um, et cetera. Um, can't give and that's for the account. matching. Um, this is just period. Oh, period. Okay. If you're, yeah. you're going to be in this program, you cannot accept contributions from these people, from these, from these okay. entities. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the cash contribution is greater than a hundred dollars. That's just a state law. Mm -hmm. um, and then anonymous contributions. Again, you, you're not allowed to accept anonymous contributions, period. Not mm -hmm. just outside of this program. Event. Right. Um, and then this is just the matching formula. Mm -hmm. That's straightforward. And then we have language in here, not all the, um, I don't think that, um, for instance, um, Montgomery County counts um, contributions less than um, a dollar at all. I think they're not considered mm -hmm. at all, but mm -hmm. we at least consider it. Um, then, this part right here, um, mm -hmm. need to determine policy in kind mm -hmm. contributions. So I think we said no in kind at all. Is that what? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's. Hold on. Yeah, I think that's how it's. Okay. Yeah. So in other counties, I haven't studied our language very clearly, but I think that's what it should be. Well, oh, this is um, this, this is what this was says, in, this is what Montgomery County has. So they must and they it. have it to two. Oh, we have it too. We have it too. And okay. they're um, under the definition of qualifying contributions of uh, in the de definitional section. Okay. It says, uh, means eligible private contribution supporter candidate that is D, not an in-kind contribution of property, goods, and services. So we've already covered it in the legislation. But can they get in-kind contributions at all? Or is it just uh, It won't be a qualifying contribution. But, they, but they're allowed yeah, to but can they They're get allowed it? to get it, but there won't be any matching to it. So well, I think this... what if they get a six thousand dollar contribution from somebody to print some material? Somebody well, here... see, right? And then, I mean, is that okay or is that not okay? Well, we that's what they're they're getting the contribution. Is it earmarked to that? Is that what you're talking about? Well, I mean, no. what if they get. I mean, they get. I mean, they get it if you get flyers it, you... printed and the printer doesn't charge them for it. Can can that or you know somebody buys two hundred. $250 worth. Yeah, I think that's what we're deciding now. We can decide at this moment, mm -hmm. hey, you can receive an in-kind contribution um, and well, it, it cannot matched. exceed, it won't be matched, but it okay. also cannot exceed $250. But I think who the only monitors other, that? Huh? I, mean, how do we know? I mean, who monitors that and how do we know if anybody's received it or not? I mean, you have okay. to do that. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, um, 
they are required to report in kind contracts yeah. Yeah. in decrease as well. Yeah, that's state law. Yeah. Yeah, they have to report that. So my thing is, um, can we put language in here and this and we'll we can do a motion for it. I will put language in there to clarify mm -hmm. um an in-kind donation uh contribution cannot exceed 250 mm -hmm. um per yep. per person or per entity or whatever may have you. Um if you guys don't think that that language is necessary, I kind of do well, just because I would yeah, let me mm -hmm. look real quick. An in-kind contribution, bro, is not eligible for receiving matching <laughs> dollars. Then cannot have a value that exceeds two hundred fifty dollars. I think it's already clear. Yeah, it's in there. It's in yeah. there. Well, this this is and Montgomery County's. So no, I know, but, but I'm it. looking at I'm looking oh, okay. at what we this, have. Yeah. Okay. And, and putting that. Okay. With this. Okay. The fact is, uh, if it's an in-kind contribution, we've already established it's not a qualifying one. So right. even though you make it, uh, it will not be matching. But at the same time that contribution is going to stay within 250,000. I mean, $250. Right. So, and that is, is that so let general. me explain what, let me explain what I'm, oh, you want to say something, Commissioner Williams? Go ahead. I kind of think it's ambiguous because it's, yeah. it says if not, was, yeah. not eligible to receive public elections. But then, then the other sentence says, but in-kind donation, cannot have a exceed a value dollar amount. So is it that it has a dollar amount that it did not exceed 250? Or is it that it's you can't do it at all? It's a little ambiguous. No, what it's saying is that uh I would say this. We can See, flip you it. Have so to take, you have to take both uh both sentences together. So right. what it is saying is that you won't get the matching dollars. It ain't saying it says, says it's not you're not eligible to receive the public matching dollars didn't say you can't make one. So let me let me explain to you. I'm gonna go to the commissioners, uh, so teacher and commissioner Dan. I think commissioner Dan had his hand raised first. Let me explain to you my my thoughts behind this. If it is a, I, I don't want to be presumptuous, but let's mm -hmm. say it's a grassroots candidate. This is their first go around. This is their first time in pub in in this doing this and things of that nature, and they're re referencing the summary guide. I want things to be as clear as possible to them yeah. just yeah. so that there is no confusion. So that was my um, hand in where I was going to say, like, to make sure, like, an in-kind donation contribution cannot exceed $250 per person or per entity. That's why I added that little part there. To um, Commissioner Williams' point, um, Commissioner, I do think that the uh, what the attorney is saying is that you have to look at it in both contexts. So you can receive an in-kind contribution, just not over $250, and know that that in-kind contribution will not be matched with this program. Right. Take and I think together. if you wanted to, if we wanted to, if you're asking that we wordsmith that so that has a little bit more clarity, I'm definitely fine with that. Okay. Um, um, but I definitely... Could we do that, have a little bit more? Okay. Okay. If we could um, wordsmith that part to have a little bit more clarity and okay. also mm -hmm. um, put in the the port the portion that I had talked about in regards to clarifying that it's two fifty per, per like person like I can't give two fifty one minute and then give another in kind donation for two fifty again. Right, um, right, Commissioner Commissioner Smith. Okay, I see yeah. what you're saying per person. Mm -hmm. okay. And and one cannot give two hundred fifty dollar donation of money that is matching and a $250 contribution of in kind. I, right. So we're right. talking about either or. So you, yeah, in the aggregate. Are we, so, are we, are we, yes. are we all right. in agreement right. with that? I think so, that's the spirit of the legislation. Yeah, and okay. I think the word aggregate is, could be helpful yeah, in there. Because it's, a, it's in the legislation itself. Okay. Yeah. That's so. That was helpful. Thanks. So, what? Uh, let me see if I, I, I maybe a wordsmith this on the spot. Okay. Um, so, I think the first sentence is fine. Okay. Okay. I think that is fine. I would I would do something like say although an in kind contribution. You'd have to switch it. Um, you'd have to switch it to start in kind contributions. Um, in-kind contributions may be accepted, but cannot exceed $250 per person right. and cannot something else. And then the last sentence would be, 
all in-kind contributions, blah, 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 are not eligible to receive matching dollars. Like you have to switch the, the top and the bottom and then put additional sentencing at the yeah, top. And have, have a value. Yeah, I think the key, the thing that's going to be hardest to <clears throat> to craft um, the wording, and I'll, I'll you know I'll work on it. I have to think on it. Uh -huh. Is that idea that the two hundred fifty dollar donation max is inclusive of both in kind and let's just say cash? So okay. if someone uh -huh. gives a two hundred gives a two hundred dollar in kind, the most they can give in cash is fifty dollars. You might have to do, Miss Warner Wiggins, you might have to do like bullet points. Like, yes. <laughs> like I think that would be best too, yes. to break yes. this up into bullet points in kind. Okay. Um, to, to teacher Dan, I'm commissioner. To teacher, yeah. commissioner. I would just make a point. I think if I were a candidate, I would ask for the 250 in cash because it would get matched. There's oh. no point it, because there's a limit of 250. What is the point in somebody giving you 250 in kind if they're having a get together for you buying the cake it's better for them to give you the cash so you get the match and you buy the cake rather than them giving you a cake and you get no match so I, I think we should make it very clear that in kind is subject to the same cap and is not matched and if you want to yeah. put okay. a yeah. thing, therefore okay. you know will not get any matching contributions i think so then as a candidate it becomes clear to you what's in your better interest to do Right. Yeah, I, I think we're all in agreement with that. And then we'll just put it in bullet points so that it's very like kind of this, 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 yeah. no ors. Mm -hmm. um, do we need a motion for that? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, you're literally, okay. I, yeah, you're just, literally the, I, I would say the content of it, um, you, you can just make a motion that we're going to amend this and the amendment's okay. going to take the form of this, this, and this. I mean, that's it. Motion to amend this uh, particular language. Yeah, and say what you say before. Say what you were going to do again. How you going gotcha. to frame it? Do we, can I have a motion to amend this language to be bullet pointed and to clarify that in kind donations uh, will not be matched, um, mm -hmm. are subject to the same requirements as cash donations, and uh, cannot exceed a, a two hundred fifty dollar amount. Okay. So moved. A, yeah, so moved. Okay. Second. Okay. okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All aye. right. Jacqueline, what do you think? Yes, I mean, I I agree. Um, again, the 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 hardest part is going to be crafting the language in a way that's right. clear. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. But I think I think we're there. Okay. We're moving along, guys. Yes. We're moving along. <laughs> only, right. We're only halfway through. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, this is good. Okay, keep so going. Um, the, 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 mm -hmm. say that the candidate and the spouse can contribute each $6,000, then saying a receipt is required, um, say that a canceled check does not qualify as a receipt. Um, so that's just general language. Mm -hmm. Um, if checks are are given, just has some requirements for the um what a check must have. Um, it must have the person's name on it. Um, and these are just kind of general requirements for what a check. Can mm -hmm. have. Digital signatures again. Um, you can't just um have someone just check a box saying that they agree um, to whatever's on the receipt. They have to affirmatively make an action such as typing um, a name, saying mm -hmm. that they understand the law and the requirements for the contribution. Um, and then this just talks about how someone becomes certified. Um, and so the board and the, by board, it's the state board will certify a candidate no later mm -hmm. than 10 business days after receiving all the receipts, a declaration from the candidate, agreeing to follow regulations, um, the campaign finance report that this is all done in ND crits. And then there's this part, the certification is only required once. Um, they have to qualify at least 45 days prior to the election. Um, this is certification if they were previously in a different, um, they were trying to qualify for a different elective office. Um, so that's just requirements around that particular situation. Um, 
So, and this is saying if, if someone wins the primary, they're automatically qualified for the general election. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, if they choose not to participate, they have to withdraw using the proper standards. So all of this is just, this is again, just how um, MD Chris works. So we don't have to go through this. This is just saying how you fill out the forms essentially in MD Chris. So I had a quick question, and that is because Montgomery yeah. County uh, offers two tranches, right? One for the primary, one for the general. Mm -hmm. And we, so we need to make that clear somewhere that whatever you get, you know, the maximum of 75,000 for a district seat is what you get, and you have to keep that for the general as well, right? So there isn't, yeah. Yeah, because there yeah, there's other piece too that if the general election is not contested, which happens quite often in Prince George's County, right? then they no longer receive matching dollars. Right. And even if it is contested, they don't get more than the 75. So if they, right. use they wouldn't get more, exactly. they don't have anything to use in the general. But we, it, it's very, it would, it would not be surprising if there are candidates that don't hit the max, but are not eligible for matching dollars going into the general election because it's no longer contested. Yeah, yeah, that's fine because if it's not contested, you know, you're in, right? So yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. However, however, what what's the cutoff? Should there be a cutoff date to submit receipts for the primary? Because people will have expenditures right up until the day of the election and, uh, you know, may even have mm -hmm. invoices come in after the election for things that occurred. So there should be a, a like, the general, uh, the date for submitting, mm -hmm. it's not there. We should have a date that would be the cutoff for submission of, and I guess that would work for the primary, the other candidates. So if there's other candidates that lost, they would have to submit all their stuff, whatever that would be, 15 days after the primary. And if the winning candidate no longer has a uh, opposition, mm -hmm. then that would be the same date. So we just can make those the same and it should be consistent with what we have for the general. And I think that would mm -hmm. that would be clear and help answer it. But I think, I, thanks for bringing that up because that was, I had written that as a question. Yeah. So you guys have answered that. So thanks. I mean, can and, we put that? Yeah, and so should we, that be 15 days or should that be, you know, some number of days after the result is announced because sometimes results take longer because ooh, the counting. Good point. What if it's after certification? Because what if um, there's a, a recount and it's somebody wins by six votes which has happened before right you know? right yeah i feel like i'll have to go back and look and see if there's language around um the primary i i feel like it might the language might only just talk about talk about having to submit receipts within a certain period of time after the general election and it could right. be that we just allow that anyway even if you're not in a contested general election you still have until that same date to submit all of your receipts, but the receipts have to be um, only for the period up up to the point where the election was contested. Um, however, something like however that. that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah. in Montgomery County, if they only have one, you know, one cycle, you know, they yeah. don't have the, the two parts, they wouldn't have it in their rules. So, right, right, right. Yep, that's a good point. Because uh, we may not want to drag it out. We may not want to give people until November to, su to submit a receipt from, you know, six yeah. months prior. I you know? agree. I think I think we should come up with a number, but we should be, yeah. like the point brought up, we have to be. But probably their expenditures would be before the election anyway. So even if yeah. I don't, you know, unless they can hire an attorney to represent them in a recount, they wouldn't have any other expenditure that would be legitimate for the campaign. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as we're trying to figure that out, I'm wondering mm -hmm. would that go under, remember the question that Commissioner Tolson had uh, within that chart in those days mm -hmm. where, the, where oh, we had yes. to put the heading? Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like that information should go right there. Like when we yeah. talk about like the flow of something and the flow of information, like yep. this is when you need to certify, this is when you need to do this, this is when you need to turn in the receipts. That's all under that chart because yeah. that'll be a good reference point for them. Yeah. Um, and then, like, like Commissioner Dan said, we just need to figure out the date and timing behind that. All right. Okay. So this right. uh, this just talks about what qualifies for matching and what doesn't. Um, 
pretty straightforward. Um, again, contributors information. Oh. This is again just it's essentially the same stuff that has to be included on the receipt. Uh, um, so county of residence is one of the things that has to be selected. So when the state board goes into MD Chris to determine what's eligible for matching, they're going to look to see if that box is checked. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is again just how to enter expenditures. This is all about how MD Chris works. So we don't have to go through that. Um, uh, linking repeats. So that's another thing. Um. Uh, one thing that candidates, we would ask candidates to do. So we talked a bit about last meeting, I believe, what if someone moves during the course of the election cycle? Um, ideally, what would happen is the candidate would link that person and say, you know, John Smith that used to live, you know, in Montgomery County now lives, it's the same John Smith, but now they live in Hyattsville. They mm -hmm. ideally would go in and link those two. So that we know it's the same John Smith. Gotcha. And that's how we would know that they're that John Smith's not contributing more than $250. Right. Otherwise, we don't necessarily know that's the same John Smith. So does the so the piece he contributed in Montgomery County doesn't get matched? And only it, the stuff that he that right. contributed after getting Prince George's gets matched. Right. But John Smith is still limited to $250 total, even if- So, does, so because the first $25 is match 71, then is that first 25 considered the one he contributed in Montgomery, or is this the first 25 that gets contributed in Prince George's? I think we I think we decided that um, it would count as whatever the first dollar contributed in Prince George's County would be matched at the, at the higher rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what we decided when we um, went through those kind of policy questions, and that and that's in alignment with the way um, the state system works. Mm -hmm. um, that it'll start matching the starting at the point at which the person's in Prince George's County. So, all right. Um, and these are just requirements of funds um, that the reporting requirements. Um, and then uh, withdrawal requirements for withdrawal. You have something. If you go back to mm -hmm. under distribution of public funds. Um, are you there yet? I'm sorry. This, here, this part about interest. Yeah, I think it's the part about interest, but um. Go up. Uh, this part, um, we yeah, I do have quite a few notes. <laughs> yeah, you have the candidate's uh, adult sibling or parent. Yes, that's well, the one I think yes. is the one that that's the the next note that I think you have. Um, that they can't receive matching funds for in kind services or a contribution or loan made by the candidate or the candidate's spouse, sibling, or parent. But how do we know? Um, and, it's, and I mean, essentially, we would be, I mean, re relying on the candidate to indicate the relationship. That's you a mean about point. a child? It could be, yeah. So um, it doesn't, the way the language is written, I don't know if it mentions child. It just says no, spouse, no, sibling, no. sibling or parent. Okay. I guess my thing is that everybody who, in the name of whoever they do, there's going to have to be that state issued identification, you know, that laundry list we just mm -hmm. went through, including the attestation. So we'll find out whether they're a minor or not. No, 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 no. The oh. we're talking about, I see, I see what you're saying, but we're talking about where it says adult, um, any kind of a contribution or loan made by the candidates, the candidate or the candidate's spouse, adult sibling, or parent. Okay. And Got so um she's saying like how do we certify that this is not someone so for example, I don't I, I don't I don't have my husband's last name mm -hmm. so if he were to run for office and I were to give him a donation you know we're, we're relying on my honesty which is mm -hmm. I'll say hey that's my husband but what if someone like that's what she's saying how mm -hmm. do we confirm that this is someone's spouse how do we confirm that mm -hmm. this is an adult sibling because people have mm -hmm. in-laws and they remarry and things of that nature or how do we confirm that this is a parent we're we're all assuming that someone's going to have the like 
oh, that has to be the husband because it's Parker. That has to be the adult child because it's Parker. So that's the question of how do we, I think that was the question that you had. How do we confirm? How we determine? I don't um, know if we could, short of asking the people to say, I am not. Relationship not, to candidate, not, yeah. Or something like that, yeah. Short of asking people. Um, I don't know if there is a way for us to do that in any reliable way. The, and the other thing, so another thing that, you know, of course comes up with the state is um, that, you know, people will file complaints. If they, if they. Yeah, they watch, yeah, they it. watch them. Yeah, they, as Will they look at, at, to believe there's there's they, something going on. They follow people's <laughs> campaign donations, honey. So I, I mean, that's why I really don't. Yeah. I saw the note. I wanted to make sure that we addressed it, but I don't feel yeah. like that's something that we would have to go um, too in depth in because um, it'll all come to light at some point. To be yeah. quite frank, mm-hmm. um, the only thing that we could add would be to go back to the language that we had were the attestation. Mm-hmm. And then I guess on the attestation paper, right? Something like, oh, you are a resident and this is your relationship to the candidate. Right. Like that was the only, that would be the only thing that we could do to, I guess, kind of address that right. saying you are a resident of Prince George's County and, oh, this is not your husband or your wife or your um, kid's sister or, you right. know, right. your child. Yeah. And so we could do that. Um, I mean, this thoughts, is thoughts or this is not? Not, not, or you know, not. not. Okay. Or even if they said that it is, now we know, and we know that we're not going to match that fund. Uh-huh. So yeah, you live in Prince George's County, but you're not going to get that money. Um, so teacher, I'm, commissioner, so teacher, I'm going to come to you, but I just want to have a, well, let me get you there before I ask the, the commission if they are agreeing with that addition to the att- attestation. Ooh, Lord of mercy. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Satichar. Yeah. No, I just, maybe I'm just a bit confused, but why why do we have this phrase in here that um, the spouse or the sibling or the parent? That's in the legislation. The legislation says that um, these these are not eligible for matching funds. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense because you're your spouse can give you like six thousand dollars and so no but the six thousand but the match is restricted to the first 250 right so um so i don't know why if a parent gives you 250 it's not matched as long as a parent lives in prince george's mm. that's I'll not even check the legislation but i'm pretty sure this is in Hold there on. Let me look. <sighs> Adults, adult sibling. The adult sibling is interesting too, because if yeah. you know, if I, adult sibling and I have a little fourteen-year-old sister who gives me <laughs> two fifty. Yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking it. Yeah, yeah, taking it. Twelve well. <laughs> <laughs> siblings. You know, that's what you counting. No, I'm taking it, <laughs> but I don't. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Hold on. The parent part is kind of, but we'll figure this out. Yeah. Um. While he's looking that up, would yeah. we be if if it's if it's found that it's in legislation? Because I'm trying to save us time. Would yeah. we be all agree to adding that to the attestation of them them um clarifying their relationship, like verifying I am not uh I am not a the candidate's spouse adult sibling or parent uh, do i have a motion for that it makes it too complicated because if any of those is left out in the attestation then the person doesn't get it i mean what are the chances i think we just say this to the candidate and don't get too bureaucratic about it um, as long as the candidate knows mm-hmm. right we assume it's okay because i mean it might be one or two people slipping in through the cracks but to have everybody go through and sign on tick all these boxes you know, it's no, it'd be one, it'd be one box. It'd be one box. You you are not a spouse in comma yeah. or an adult sibling, comma, or a parent. Yeah, but that's an additional box in addition to other boxes that you're ticking, right? I'm a resident. For the no, yeah, that's two boxes. The attestation. I live in French George's County and I'm not this person's wife, okay. husband, um, the, sibling. The part parent. that talks about spouse <laughs> is really just talking about the the citizen funded campaign account accepting contributions and loans for a yeah. total of six 
six thousand dollars. It doesn't get into what's eligible, um, uh, eligible. Um, I, I found the part that I was. I found the part I was referring to. It's in um. Where, I'm looking page four. I'm looking at um. So ten three twenty seven. Ten. Oh, you're looking at 327? Hold on. Yeah, distribution of public contribution. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Sorry, I was looking at 324. Yeah, distribution no is many of the time constants. Okay. And then you have to go all the way down to E. E, okay. Let's see. Second main shall not distribute. Public contribution. The director shall not distribute a public contribution based on a contribution from a, the candidate, the candidate's spouse, adult sibling, or parent. So shall not. Mm -hmm. Right. In other words, there's no matching. Yeah. Right. And we got that language. I think right yeah. now we're talking about. Um, just so the the question the thing that was in question is how do we confirm that this is not these things when you're accepting contribution and then the documentation behind it right now we're at the point in where we're trying to decide if we want to add this language to the attestation um it's my understanding that attest attestation is literally one box hey i live in prince george's county i'm attesting to that this would be just one other box the teacher that would say and i am not the candidate's spouse adult sibling or parent yeah, it's two boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is correct. That's two boxes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't see a problem with that in context to, you know, if I don't see an issue with that, and I, right, yeah, yeah I well, see that this was carried over from CB ninety nine, so it was there in the mm -hmm. other journals. Okay, do we? So, do I have a motion to add that language to the attestation paper? I move that we add that language to the ad. I can't say that word either. Attestation. <laughs> Attestation. I'm struggling. <laughs> struggling with this. Okay. Is there a second? I thought she was a second. I'm sorry. A second. Oh. Second. All right. All in favor? Thank you, uh, Commissioner Tolson. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's move on. Okay. We are almost done, guys. We, we... Let's make a <laughs> it's once a month. Yeah. We got this. All yeah. right. Let's keep struggling. Let's keep going through. All right. Now, this again is just maximum pop um, contributions. Um, this so was this the one where you saying the policy around charging interest for excess yeah. funds received. And okay. I don't know if we want to address this now. It's just saying if, if they take a long time to pay the money back. You know, are we going to charge some interest? Um, I don't think that's a necessarily a decision we have to make right now. But right, I don't think that's a decision that we have to make right now. But I do want to put on record: if they're mm -hmm. going to public financing, like mm -hmm. I don't want. It's not. I don't. I don't feel like we should. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. I, as we all know, I work. I work with the commission mm -hmm. as we're as a whole body. So this is a conversation that we can have together. But I feel like if they're in public financing, ask them to pay the money back. We don't need to put on heavier fines or fines onto them. Obviously, if they're in this program, they might not have the mechanisms to self-fund like or, or get massive contributions from other people like people we know. So <laughs> go ahead, Commissioner the teacher. Oh, I just, you know, in this context, and we don't have to have a discussion about this right now, I was wondering if people are following the withdrawal of the mayoral candidate in Baltimore City, Thiru Vignaraja, who was publicly financed, has stopped and withdrawn his campaign and endorsed his opponent. And he just received a tranche of $66,000 in public financing. So I think if we follow that, we'll see everything that's going on there and uh, figure out what to do. Because, uh, I mean, I know a lot of publicly financed candidates, including former county executive Russian Baker, when he ran for governor, did not withdraw from the race because they had received public financing. And if you withdraw from the race or if you close your campaign, right. then you have to return everything that you got. Mm -hmm. So he did not. I know there are people in Montgomery County who ran for county council who also did not close their campaigns. So this is something to keep in mind 
that this falls as a big burden on publicly financed candidates and they just remain in the race. They just stop campaigning, but they remain in the race so they don't have right. to return the money. So that's- I just... guess my question, so to, teach, to commissioners, to teach you, my question to the information you're providing is, how would this, how would we alter this language here to address that? Well, so there was some some comment about interest accruing if he didn't return it in a certain period of time. And I, you know, I think, um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I haven't thought through this fully to know whether that's a good thing to do or not a good thing to do. But I think requiring a return of the money is already in the law. Okay. I think to the point that you're making, um, can we think about and and can you, um, Ms. Warner Wiggins, draft some sample language around if you withdraw from the if you withdraw, like if you're saying, hey, or you publicly make a statement, whatever the case may be that you are no longer continuing your race, then subsequently from, I guess that point on, that's when the interest would accrue. I guess for me, um, yeah, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm always concerned about charging people who are in this particular program, but to the point that you're bringing up, if you get out and there's like two months left in the in the race, but you're not, taking yourself fully out and returning the money, then to your point, it's a drain on our resources. And that's really not the point of public financing either. So, right. yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I think what can be that middle ground, I think what candidates realize and what candidates do is that they do not declare that they are withdrawing from the race. They simply stop campaigning and therefore, and then at the end of, you know, when the primary is held or the general is held, they settle accounts. So, I mean, that's how you do it if in because otherwise you have to return not just the money that you have left in the account, but you have to return everything that was given to you. I um, say let's um so I, I say let's I, mean, I find let's that think on possibly that. punitive, but apparently candidates figure out a way around it, and that's what is done. And so um so that's it. That's so, quick, quick question. Isn't it possible to have a uh, allow just the return of unspent funds and those that have not already been um Well, that's in the spent. law itself. Remember, yeah, that's, that's law. already in the but, law. In fact, okay. termination but, of candidacy is dealt with in uh, Section 10.329B. Participating candidate who withdraws under subsection A1 shall repay to the fund the full amount of any public contribution received plus interest accruing from the date of withdrawal at the same rate as the current bank prime loan, blah, blah, blah. So that does, ex that does exist in the legislation. Can you but they, okay. would, they would have to do that formal, like you said, withdrawal. As so if they, if, if, not... if they spent money on brochures and stuff, then they cannot, they have, they're out of pocket for that if they withdraw. No, so you don't withdraw. So you just- Right, right. Money. But that's right. what I'm saying. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. We we need to let's take some time because we need to think about language around that to address that workaround. Um, because to the point, we're not trying to have it to where candidates put a drain on resources. You shouldn't you shouldn't be unable to withdraw because you can't pay everything back or anything to that effect. But then on the other side of it, well, then not, on the other we're, side we're, of it, I, you should I, have I'm, you should be able yeah. to you know, we should be able to address that. So that might be something we need to think about. I'm sorry, before you go, Commissioner Maddox, I'm uh, sorry, Attorney Maddox, I think Commissioner Diane Williams wanted to say something. Okay. Yes, Attorney, can you please reference that legislation that you just referenced where that information was in? Oh, section three. Section. Are you talking about me? Yes, that wonderful oh. language that you just read. Yeah, section 10-329B. Uh, Okay. That's in the that's in uh, CB seventy six twenty twenty three draft two. Thank you. Thank you. We just we I think we just need to figure out how we want to do that, and we can come up with that in the chat over the course of this month to figure it out. But I definitely think that we need to find a way to address it. I liked what Commissioner um, Smith said about in relation to in relation to returning the funds that have not been spent at the time that you withdraw and then maybe mm -hmm. giving additional time to repay back the matching dollars. 
I don't know if now attorney Maddox, I don't know if that would be oh go ahead. Um, I would say, um that the discussion uh, it makes a lot of sense to have the discussion, but a change of that type would require a change in the legislation. Yes, because yeah, the that's what I was about to ask that. Okay. The legislation dealing with unspent mm -hmm. funds actually is uh there is uh language that talks about specifically unspent funds. So um that then that's separate from 329. Yeah, but I think I mean from the from the fairness to the candidate or the candidate's own financial uh, point of view, the simple thing is to just not withdraw, so stop campaigning. Your name still appears on the ballot, but you haven't withdrawn, and you're just not collecting any more money. You're not spending any more money, and whatever is left goes goes. goes oh back. no, I know what you're saying operationally. I'm but just the telling. Question is, I'm the telling. Question, the, the question is, do we want to tell them how to work around that? No, I think is it is very right? obvious because all candidates know. So I think making it very clear that should you withdraw, you owe all matching yep. money you have received so making that very clear to the candidate right at the beginning lets mm -hmm. them know what they're getting into commissioner williams did you have something you wanted to say williams. i was just saying it seems like we can't alter that legislation so maybe just put mm -hmm. some of that portion of that legislation in there so it can make it clear mm -hmm. okay right and then just just so everyone understands this is a whole separate issue this is if someone just gets more money than they were supposed to get Mm -hmm. return. Say that again, Jacqueline. I'm sorry. What this particular trying? section is, yeah. is is referring to a situation where someone gets so if the max is you know seven hundred fifty thousand and we accidentally pay them seven hundred eighty thousand, oh. then they're required to return the thirty thousand over. Gotcha. Um, and so it doesn't. Um, it does say they have to return it within five business days. Um, but if they don't. You know, I was right. be, there's nothing specific around that. What happens if they don't do it? Um, so, well, this extra money that they got, they need to get it back. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. So do we want to charge interest? You know. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you might have to give us interest, baby, because I don't know if you've been watching the budget cycles. But right. No. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, go ahead, Commissioner um, teacher. You're muted. You're muted. Does the state just keep track of this, and then when you next submit, you get less? No. Um. Well, that, is that a possibility? Because in the heat of the moment, while you're doing so many things, maybe you don't realize you got more than you should have. It would probably. Um. Well, the state wouldn't necessarily be tracking it. This is mostly a situation where I would imagine a situation where, um we don't realize that someone has exceeded again that 750,000 whatever the max is that's probably where we would have this this problem where they get the maximum amount that they the program allows period um but we inadvertently pay them too much yeah so that's that's the fault not of the candidate but of the entity mm -hmm. that the money right i'm not saying they shouldn't return it but yeah charge yeah. them interest for a mistake that wasn't theirs i think is is a bit excessive. Yeah. It's just information saying you need to return this money. Right. Right. You know, is probably sufficient. Yeah. Um, and then okay. Then this is just um so this says basically the um within 30 days after certifying the results of the primary, um, any unspent funds, if the if someone who did not win the primary, any unspent funds need to be returned to the fund within 30 days that's that and then here's the whole language around withdrawal so right. um and then there's uh documents um state documents around actually officially withdrawing um mm -hmm. and it does say they have to return all of the contributions plus interest at the primary right. so all the unspent funds are regarded as matching funds and not as oh perfect. yes right. yes so, that's how i take it right um, no, that's how it is and therefore you have to zero yeah. out your account basically yes it's right. an assumption that you're spending your money first your, your money first in the right. public mm -hmm. that's how i take it yes um, mm -hmm. okay yeah um and then um and then again this is the whole thing around the director of finance determining if there's enough funding in the um sure. 
You sped past that one. Okay. Yes, so I, I, I went I went back up <laughs> by mistake. <laughs> this is the insufficient fund. If the director mm -hmm. is insufficient fund. Okay. That's mm -hmm. just straight out the legislation. Yeah. Um, if there's a zero account balance, if, if the balance is zero, and this is just mm -hmm. kind of the pot, you know, money is completely gone, what the process is for paying candidates. And so this is again using Montgomery County's language. And so basically it's almost essentially uh, you know, continue, you know, the candidates can continue to submit their receipts and be paid in the order of receipt mm -hmm. um as funds become available. And then mm -hmm. when the funds are exhausted, then that's it. That's essentially what this says. Um, contested elections. Um, so financing is only available to candidates participating in contested elections. Um, and it says the director must be notified by the state board within five business days if the board determines that the candidate is no longer in a contested election. And then that would be that would end the matching dollars. And then allowable uses of money, uh, purchasing materials prior to filing notice of intent. So this this gets into um, this gets a little complicated. If someone um, if someone tries to use funds that they received prior to filing a notice of intent, um, in in what situations can the funds be used, and in what kind of ways? Mm -hmm. um, right. At seven twenty four, I don't know if we want to get into that. <laughs> um, you you all can let me let me know. Um. I'm looking. I'm looking. So, <laughs> uh, a couple of things. Okay, I like the fact that you have the examples. Uh -huh. So I think that's important. Um, I think maybe adding one or two more examples, if we can. Okay. Um, to just kind of clarify it, it as, as it as much as possible. Like, hey, these are examples. Here's okay. here's three. You know, here's three okay. or four to show you the options of how you would you know be penalized or whatever may have you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, uh, Commissioner teacher. So this is taken from Montgomery County, right? I think I've yes. Uh -huh. So I mean, this these are the reasons why. The, 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 why the council put in the requirement that those with existing campaign accounts need to sign up two years before the primary mm -hmm. should not have used a certain amount of money. It's, 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 I mean, this was in conversation with the state, with the with Jared DeMarinus, that this language was written in our bill and put forward and uh, so that you are not gaming the system and using money from your existing, I mean, if you didn't have an existing account, I think this would be hard to do. What are you doing then with your own money? You are spending 10,000 to do a website. I mean, so you're... in this case, if you um, pay for the website um, prior to filing the notice of intent, it's okay. Right. For you to... I think when this has happened in the past, people have used their existing campaign funds to do this, to build a website, and then said, I'm going to run publicly financed. So the website is already there and you're using it, mm -hmm. right? And it's to prevent that, that this two year um, deadline has been put into our legislation. But of course, I mean, we need to get that. That's the whole other thing. We need to get the word out to people. That mm -hmm. this yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's a, we, is, I think, putting these things in there is just for information that people should have in general. But mm -hmm. essentially to your point, they got a month. Yeah. <laughs> you have a month to, to make this decision and hopefully you are not spending things down in a month. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, but, but this then is- There's a limit to the amount of dollars so that's also there in the language of the, of the bill. There's a limit mm -hmm. to what they can spend, right? And if they've spent more than that, then they're not eligible to even right. run a publicly financed campaign. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's move on. Okay. Um, um then more prohibited uses of money transfers, um complaints go to the board. Here it is. Board. Will candidates uh, in uncontested general elections still be eligible to receive matching funds? I think we talked about this earlier in the night. Yeah, so the answer is no to this. That if it's an uncontested mm -hmm. general election, mm -hmm. then they, they would cease to be eligible for yeah. um, matching dollars at that point. 
at the point that the primary certified. Right. Within 90 days uh, after the county board certified the results, candidate must pay any unspent money. If candidate does not pay unspent money um, within 90 days, correct? If they don't, right. Right. all right, interest will accrue. But it yeah. doesn't say, this is not, unlike the other part where it said it'd be, it would accrue at the prime rate, there's just no specifications on interest, what the interest rate would be. So something to think about. They say within 90 days of what again? After certified the county the, board certified the results of the general election. Ours says within 30 days. Um, 30 That's under days. H, so three section 10-327H, return of unspent mm -hmm. funds within within 30 days after the county board certifies the results of the primary election. This is the general election. Okay, okay, let me go yep. to the general. Hold on. All right, hold on. While he's looking that up, um, do we want to, as a board, specify the rate of interest that we would want to accrue? On or before December 31st, after the but general election, participate. We might have candidate. to, Commissioner Tolson, because it says interest charges will accrue. And I don't know who else would be charged to decide that interest. Like, would the county be deciding that or the state board? I had, yeah, that's why I was like, no, let's just not say it. <laughs> but I see your point. I don't know what it would be. Uh, we, we would might have to do that. And then what would be. I guess my question is, what is the rate that Mo, Mo County does it at or other counties do it at? Well, Should it be within, in accordance with some, not cost of living, but something, some kind of index? That's a the, good point. Or whatever the prime rate is. Yeah. At that point, yeah. Yeah. So, kind of index, so we wouldn't have to get involved with putting yeah. it. With the prime was, rate? Okay. That was the elsewhere. Prime. Yeah, it's already elsewhere, I thought. Right. Yeah. So we could just match that language. Same one. Um, Mm -hmm. Commissioner Tolson, did you have you feel like you had something to say? I was just rates can get high. <laughs> they they can. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I did find the provision that's also in subsection H okay. as far as after the general election. So it says on or before December 31st, after the general election, the participating candidate shall return to the fund any unspent money in the candidate citizen funded campaign account. So they have a date certain. They don't have 90 days, they have a date okay. certain, which All is right, so then we put in the, on before December 31st. So then let's put that in the legisl let's, legislation. Let's put that in the legislation. Exactly graph. on or before December 31st. Okay. Assuming it's not a contested general and there's you know the certification delay and all of that. So I'm assuming- No, it doesn't say any of that. <laughs> Y'all are funny tonight. <laughs> I don't say any of that. It doesn't okay. say any of that. It just says all it says. It just says is, December 31st. Yeah, get the money back. Okay. Yep. We're going to make that change. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we make that change. And then for the interest, I think we are all in agreement. We can put a motion to just kind of add the point of the prime, mm -hmm. the, whatever the language is that is previously in the document. That will be what will put for the um, interest charges will accrue portion. Mm -hmm. um, do I, I, I have a motion for that? Motion. Second. 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 All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, 732, y'all. Okay. Um, <laughs> there are no provisions in legend regarding to retaining funds. Okay, certified candidate retain pay. Yeah. These are just okay. these are requirements around campaign materials. These are all state requirements for our campaign. Okay. And then that's it. Okay. Yep. Y'all right. <laughs> Yay. We should oh, listen, cool. y'all. It should be quicker now that we didn't got through that, because that was the biggest portion. Yes. Um, so yay. All right, we've done the summary guide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Public outreach contact sheet this should be quick as well i sent you guys the public contact outreach sheet um if you if you wanted to put that up miss warner wiggins you can it's really not um super um complex but it has the organization name organization point of contact 
include name, email, and or phone number, the organization email. I put the difference because sometimes a point of contact for an organization, the point of contact is different than the organizational email. Um, so I have both of those in there. Um, organization phone number, again, it could be different than your point of contact. Fair elections commissioners contact. Um, that's who the you know fair election commissioner that will put that in. Um, I know we're going to be adding stuff over the next course of a couple of days, weeks. I hope we all are adding stuff. Um, that being said, um, the, propo the proposed uh, presentation date. So for example, like let's say I put on here, um, I'm just giving an example. I'm not endorsing any particular organization or anything like that. You'd be surprised. I got to put that disclaimer out there. Let's say I put the organization of Progressive Maryland. And then I would put for myself, I am the Fair Al uh, Elections con Commissioner's contact. And then I would put the proposed date. Like this is the date that I'm proposing that we do a presentation. Um, I am asking that we all start to fill this out in the next week or so. And we all start putting in um, information um, and reaching out to people who we want to do the presentation with. Um, uh, Ms. Warner Wiggins had provided us with the um, actual quote unquote cheat guide, as well as the PowerPoint presentation. I know um, uh, me and Commissioner Diane Williams are gonna be partner up together to do some <laughs> together. Uh, Starchy and Hutch or Perry Mason and his person or whoever. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, I have older parents, but we will be doing that together. I have no problem partnering with anyone else. But go ahead and start. Let's filling. Let's start filling that out and giving presentations. I'm gonna be honest. The presentations might change because we are in the we are in the budget cycle, and there have been some some budget cycle com conversations that we've seen in the email and exchange, and that that's been coming up. So we might have to add and change a few things. We we can discuss that together. Definitely over. Um, the emails um, as they solidify and finalize what they're actually going to put in the budget. Um, our communication strategy, I know that we just, and you guys can stop me if I'm going too fast. Um, our communication strategy, I know we talked about this in the emails today, but essentially uh, we're going to be reaching out to Miss Lindsay Watts. She is the person over the county councils, like communication and things of that nature, and asking her to put out information that we need to get on mass. Um, as well as um, Ms. Warner Wiggins, you mentioned three, the Office of Communications. Communica uh, community Relations. Community Relations mm -hmm. um, offered to send some information out as well. One of the key things that we've been kind of talking about um, for the last couple of days, and we're going to bring this up right now, is the fact that those who are intending to use public financing for the 2026 election they pretty much need to know like by June. Um, I think the date is June 6th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so Mr. Satisha, you can correct me if I'm wrong. And so it's gonna be very important that we get out the information in regards to at least telling the public, if this is something you want to do, you have essentially less than a month or so to, to make that decision. Um, and that is what kind of our, the, the high level of intensity for that is what's going on right now. Um, go ahead, teacher, Commissioner teacher. Yeah, this is only for people who have existing campaign accounts and who have made um, small, um, you know, expenditures or received small small number of contributions. They have to do this by the end of June. And unfortunately, I think it's taking a long time to get a list of people who have existing campaign accounts. So I'm not sure if we will be able to send them an email informing them that, that this is in fact a deadline. So I'm not sure how we get that message across to them if we don't know who they are and what their emails are. Well, a couple of things. I know that Ms. Warner Wiggins is working with the state to get those names as, as as quick as possible. So as soon as she gets those names, I know that email is going out. And I do appreciate Mrs. Warner Wiggins for doing that. I think to your other point, these are people who already have campaign uh campaign uh, uh, accounts. So these people should be already plugged in a little bit. I mean no, I don't think they're plugged in because we have not actually made this public and this last amendment 
you know, this this was put in a, in the in the bill that went out, you know, that got passed in October. So I don't think people are following bill by bill what's going on because it's been eight years since the bill was passed in 2018. So, no, so when I say like so when are, I yeah. when I say plugged in, I mean from the perspective of if we utilize if Miss Lindsay Watts is able to get out something within two weeks. If the Office of Community Relations is able to get out something in two weeks, but to we're whom? Talking... But that, but the question I'm asking is to whom? Because it needs to go out specifically to people who have campaign accounts, right? It's not just putting it out there for people. Well, that's not... Because this, that's not... yeah, this this criterion of doing it sooner than everybody else only hits those people. So that's and what I'm also, saying. Somebody that's... who ran for sheriff may decide to run for county council, right? So. It has to go out to everybody who ran for school board or whatever it is. So maybe we ought to be also thinking. Um, I mean, what we could do is to get a list of candidates from the state board of elections of people who ran and see how we can get information out to them. So I think so. Could so I add, Commissioner, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to add that that uh, we can. As soon as there's anything available, mm -hmm. all of us can forward it to our yeah. networks and we can make sure the Democratic Central Committee, the Republican, you know, mm -hmm. all these different committees get it. And those folks should, the networks that we hit should be a valuable, you know, a, a way to get, to spread the word. So some of those people will contact those candidates as well. That's not sufficient it but i think it's you know a, a, a helpful part of it that will help and we'll do our best to get those names and do a direct hit with them yeah i think we were saying the same thing mm. different ways i'm gonna let uh commissioner williams speak let me just say it this way i think we're saying the same thing different ways and so i want just for you to hear what i'm saying what i'm saying is that i feel like to the point that uh commissioner smith made these people are plugged into a different degree than the the candidates that would be doing it for the first time. So we can ask Ms. Warner Wiggins for a copy of just a sample letter, or we can use the letter that we sent out on the emails, and we can send that out to our networks as well as asking 311 to send this out and saying, hey, for those previous candidates, just to let you know, as well as Lindsay Watts, that as we also wait for that whole list to come out. So that's three or four different avenues of hitting the possible people that we need while um, the, the list is coming out. Commissioner Williams? Yes. Uh, what are we sending out? That's what I, we need to be uniformly, but I don't know what we're sending out. Are we sending out a letter or something that we've already done? Exactly, what are we sending out to this these list of people? Yes, ma'am. The, so the remember we had sent out a letter uh, a couple of weeks back informing those people who already had campaign accounts from the list that we had from the Prince George's uh, State Board of Elections. This is you need to make a decision by June such and such. That would be we'd be taking the contents of that letter and sending that out to our networks from the perspective of, hey, if you know someone who was who ran um, and who already has a campaign account and who may want to run again, if they want to run publicly financed, please see attached letter. So it's the same letter that we sent out. We would just be putting maybe that little caveat on it. And we can ask Ms. Warner Wiggins to, to make that alteration and send that out to us. Okay. That's, that was my next question. Very good. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Satichar. Oh, I I was just um, going to ask Ms. Warner Wiggins if um, the entity that holds the civic list, whether they would be able to send this letter out as well. Because if it goes to the heads of civic organizations, they would probably know who ran in their jurisdiction and would be able to get the information out as well. So can this go out through them? Because they're not able to give us the list, but if they could send it out, that would be useful. Yes, I can forward it to them. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, Ms. Warner Wiggins, um, if you could reach out to Ms. Lindsay Watts, as well as the commissioner, the the Office of Communications, and then also send us that letter so that we can send it out in our networks with that, you know, kind of caveat of hello, just letting you know, 
this is what's going on with this particular thing. Please see the contents below. Um, I'd greatly appreciate that. And, and maybe maybe you could ask members of the council in their newsletter to put this out. Yeah, we could do that too. So if we could do that this week, that'd be great just for the standpoint of getting this information out because we're on that would go line. through Lindsay Watts. Any anything like that, you would not go to them per se. You would go to Lindsay Watts and Lindsay Watts being the communications director would then be the one to filter it to the uh, the council members. So, but Wait, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. so each council member sends out their own newsletter, right? Is that that is true? Yes. But, uh, but the thing is, the communications still goes through a process through Lindsay Watts. That's what I'm saying. Even though they what send pro- things out, I know because I'm part of that process. Yeah. No, but, I'm. I'm, I'm so saying, you're saying Lindsay Watts. I mean, just so I understand, so saying Lindsay Watts then lets the council members know. She will. She so will then forward it. She will then forward anything like that. If you're talking about directly to council members, that's who we go through the Office of Communications. That's our program. So hold on, hold on. So thank you. Thank you so much for that clarification, uh, Attorney Maddox. I will say this. Um, personally, having contacted and interacted with all of the county council, that has never been the procedures that's been communicated to me. In, at in, I'm just, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I'm just, I'm just saying. That has never been communicated to me at any point, even to today at 744. I've reached out to council members and said, hey, can you add this to your uh, newsletter? And they've not only said yes, but they've also indicated to directly contact them because they wanted to be um, directly engaged within their community. I'm not arguing with you about a process. I'm just saying it's been my experience that that the county council members have said, hey, reach out to us personally because we want to make sure this is in our... And I understand that's you as an individual. What I'm explaining is that generally the protocols are... Now, however they... That to you as an individual is one thing, but what Mm -hmm. I'm talking about is this is as the commission. And I'm just saying that uh, it's been my understanding. I've been here longer uh, than Ms. Watts and, and, and other people that mm-hmm. that has been the protocols. Now, like I said, individually, what you do is what you do, mm-hmm. but I'm just trying to let you know what the process is because now you're, you're representing an entity. No worries. Can we get that, um, can we get that policy or that procedure um, in writing just so that I can know for the future reference and also so I'll that I can sure disseminate Ms. this? I'll make sure Ms. Watts gives it to you. Okay. Okay. May I make a recommendation? Mm-hmm. Uh, since we have the communication uh, office that uh, sends out documentation, uh, I guess that represents the Fair Election Funds Commission, shouldn't we be sending our names and organizations to somebody within the county, which would be that office? And then you all would send the letter out to those different organizations and it would come officially from uh, Prince George's County. I, I just don't like the fact that it would be from my personal email. It, I think it has more weight coming mm-hmm. through that's the a, channel. That's, like a, that's, a, that's a thought. I, I think that's um, a, that should be a, I, I don't think we should send anything out that pertains to the Fair Election Funds Commission from our personal account. I, 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 and I have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, so if we could send that our list to you or whomever, and it comes out officially from 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 your office of communication or whoever you want us to send it to. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I like like I said, you're, you're people are uncomfortable with providing their um, personal emails. I, I totally understand that. Um, I think I think that that's I think I think that that's definitely. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. I'm sorry, Commissioner Williams. I didn't want to cut you off. I just think it looks more professional when it comes through the channel of you all, not from just a citizen, which I am. That's all. Mm-hmm. I I think that I definitely agree with Miss. Um, I, I definitely agree with Commissioner Williams. I think for me, um, whatever is going to be the standard. So, for example, we give it to uh, Miss Watts, and this is the official letter. I mm-hmm. personally don't have a problem sending out to my network something that has already been officially documented. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I would definitely respect um, Commissioner Williams giving 
the information to her and sending it out. Mm -hmm. um, I would just like some sort of checks and balances. So if Commissioner Williams sends that some sort of, hey, this was also sent out to this listserv or these people that I put in connection with the communications director or whoever may have you by this time. Um, but for me, if the letter is on commission letterhead, if it's mm -hmm. been stamped and approved, mm -hmm. if everything's good, mm -hmm. um, I, I personally don't have a problem sending out as long as it is officially a document or something from the Fair Elections Commission. Commission. Yeah, oh yeah. no, that's, that's totally fine. I, the, the scenario I was talking about is when you're talking about um, the, the uh, county council mm -hmm. members then putting it on their list serve and mm -hmm. moving it forward. As an entity, mm -hmm. it is best to go through the communications department and I will get the protocols that you uh do you want in writing i'll uh converse with uh uh lindsey watts and karen zavacos who is the um who's also the associate uh county uh uh administrator so no worries county council i appreciate that so we'll get we'll get it to you okay i appreciate that there's a time check of 749. I appreciate that, um, Attorney Maddox. There's a time check of 749. I do want to make sure that we get to the 20, the, uh, the FY 2025 budget letter support and mm -hmm. future meeting schedule mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to dis discuss that. Also, I also try to be very mindful of time that we do have staff on this call. So hopefully mm -hmm. we can get this wrapped up by maybe 830, 815, mm -hmm. um, just from that perspective. Um, so teacher, you had your hand up. That's okay. I can wait. But I, I just, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I think I think the job of the commission should be to ensure that this letter gets spread as widely as possible. Uh, yeah. All yeah. channels, you know. So I think as long as we have an official letter, as Ms. Parker said, I I too am happy to send it out. Uh, I think both. I think both ways are fine. I definitely agree with um, Commissioner uh, Williams in regards to sending the listserv to Ms. Watts and her sending it out and, and making sure that, that she does that, as well as if any commissioner is comfortable with official with an official letter, like, hey, we've already stamped and approved this letter, sending it out to their listservs as well. I think both is, is fine. Um, let's move to the 2025 budget letter of support. If you reference your email, um, uh, thank you, Ms. Warner Wiggins for the clarification. There was a conversation around <laughs> The, the budget and, and funding the fair elections and, and things of that nature that just happened. Um, uh, just literally a couple of days ago. Um, and I'll be honest, it was a little off-putting that the conversation was like that, like that was happening based on our recommendations and based on things that we were saying and none of us were in the room or even asked to be in the room or asked um, our opinion about that. Um, we are a commission, they did pick us. We did provide recommendations based on the information that we got um, from OMB and the county council. So it was a little disappointing and disheartening that a whole conversation was happening around our recommendations and we weren't present for that or requested to be present for that. And then on top of that, um, there were statements made in regards to what we had requested. So to that end, um, we are kind of at the point where, um, and if you watch that kind of exchange, you can see how we got here and where we want to just kind of reaffirm that, hey, let's at least keep the 400000 in the budget with the understanding that these other points need to be funded by 2026, particularly when people are making a decision to be publicly financed this June of 2024. And so um, the letter reads as follows, uh, Dear County Executive Alsobrooks, County Council Chair Ivy and members of the County Council, we thank uh, County Executive Alsa Brooks for including $400,000 for the County's Fair Elections Fund in her proposal for the, 20, the FY 2025 budget. The members of the Fair Election Commission unanimously, unanimously asked that the County Council retain this level of funding in the final adopted budget. As a pause here, there was kind of conversation about removing this. Um, while the contribution for the FY 2025 is not as much as recommended in our letter, um, from January 25th, it is meaningful. It is a meaningful amount with an equal amount or more appropriated next year can result in a credible program for public financing for the 2026 elections. This campaign finance reform measure became law in 2018 by the executive and the county council who promised it would be in place uh, for the 2026 election and in place meaning the funding would be in place. 
We want to work with you to make sure that this happens while recognizing the challenging budget constraints that the county faces today. Um, I want to pause right here. Well, no, I'll say this when we finish the, um, the, the letter. Here's why this um, counts when added to last year's appropriation. This will bring the fund balance to 800000 an amount that would, for example, provide full funding for five district county seats and two at-large seats. Appropriating as much or more to the fund next year would have a greater impact as shown in the following scenarios. There are scenarios which would be 125 um, for county seats, one at-large, one county executive, 1.6 million, six county seats, two at large, one county executive and 1.85, nine district county seats, two at large and one executive. These scenarios show that our county's fair election fund, our innovative election financing reform program to which we are mutually committed can be a success um, well short of the 2 million appropriated appropriation this year. Never did we mean to say or imply that the program would be a failure or should not begin if the funding were less. We are disappointed that this is presented as much to, to as such um, to the government operations, the fiscal policy committee budget review last week. Our former recommendation to fully fund two candidates for each eligible seat was based on the county's two analyses. At this point, we will recommend that the county attempt uh, to, to achieve scenario C before the 2026 election and to assure fidelity of the program, the language and intent and legislation of the program. Thank you for the ongoing support of the election finance reform in Prince George's County and for your understanding the importance of retaining the minimum balance of 400,000 the FY budget for the fair elections fund. I wanna say a couple of things before we get into the discussion. First off, I don't think this letter is any, any way, shape or form trying to um, cause a fight with OMB or anything like that. But it is to say that what was articulated was not um, from the commission. And because what was articulated was not from the commission, we want to be clear about our position on this. Additionally, um, Commissioner Williams had brought up before about us making sure that we are working with the county council, that we are um, being as um, supportive as possible. And I do think that this letter does um, work to say, hey, there's 400,000 in here. We need to keep the minimum and that we are working with you guys um, and we understand the budget constraints. So in context to something that uh, Commissioner Williams had brought up in the last meeting, I do think this letter uh, works to achieve that in this language while still maintaining that in order to fully and appropriately have a good fair elections program, there needs to be funding. And there needs to be funding to a certain capacity, particularly for FY 2026. Um, and I think that is the point of this letter. It's not to pick a fight with OMB, but also to say that but that's not what we said. Um, it's not to pick a fight with the county council or the county executive, but to also say that, hey, at least the 400K that's in here has to stay in here. Um, and then it's also to, to say that now, 400K this year, we're still going to need more next year. Um, and while also sticking to our, our um, mission and vision as a, a commission, our charge is to give them like the facts. And our charge mm -hmm. is to advocate for this program and mm -hmm. tell them, hey, if you don't do this, this is what can happen. And we're not trying to do that adversarially. We're not trying to do that, you know, in a negative way. And I feel like, um, and, and I, again, thank Commissioner Williams for bringing that up and really being a mainstay in that sort of thought process. Um, I think that this letter accomplishes that. So I, I wanted to say that, and I definitely wanted to open it up for discussion. If I could just say, um, <clears throat> I don't think, um, from my recollection of the meeting, I don't think um, there was any mention of the idea that if, if sufficient funding is not available, that the program should not move forward. So I'm not sure if it's appropriate to include that language in the letter, because I don't believe that that was said in the hearing. I don't think that was said from OMB, but I think that that was what was gathered from okay. the questions from the county council, like that's where they were going. Well, Does that make sense? Well, I, I, and that's and that's a, my that's my interpretation. Someone can clarify. That's right. my interpretation. Well, I guess the thing is, is that um, I'm worried about coming to a conclusion. 
Um, but I do like the fact that your letter basically advocates for the fund and the amount, the honest amount that you need to keep it sustaining. I think that's integral. That's just like any other agency advocating, this is the funding we need. That's pure and simple. Where, where the problem may be is uh, reading into what, uh, reading into some kind of conclusion uh, from maybe county council question. Is so are you, I see what you're saying. I want to get, I want to get to Commissioner Williams because I saw that she was tr trying to speak. So Commissioner Williams, I'm just going to okay. answer his question and get to you real quick. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so or would you be, would you be saying that the part where it says, the part where it begins, never did we mean to imply, is that the part where you're talking about maybe doing some editing? And that's for you too, Ms. Warner Wiggins, because it seemed to be like, that's where you guys were at. Never did we mean to imply, to say or imply that the program would be a failure or should not begin if the funding were less. I mean, I think we can leave that in and take yeah, I didn't out. Have, I didn't have a problem with that. Take one. out the we I, are the dis we are disappointed that the presentation. Um, we we're disappointed that this was presented as such. Maybe removing that is what you guys are saying. Yeah, I would. Yeah, because like I said, you're reaching a conclusion, okay. maybe based on some questioning, but. I think the letter advocating the dollar amount that you see as a commission that you have come together and agreed that is needed, that's what you want. That's what any agency would do at budget time is basically mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is what we need to uh, properly operate. Okay, so maybe look at the mission. Okay, so looking at that line, we are disappointed. Look, um, Ms. Warner Wiggins, can you highlight this whole thing and maybe make it a working document and kind of Okay. Possibly scratch starting out that line, Miss um, Commissioner Diane, uh, Commissioner Williams. Uh, I think it's a nice letter, um, but like you said, I think some of it needs to be extracted. But I also think we need to reach out to them and ask them, can we, if any way possible, come and give a presentation regarding our concerns? I wouldn't say concerns, but um, have a seat at the table to discuss this if they need be. That we're more than happy to come and give a, a briefing regarding, you know, our position in this letter. And that would be something for the, um, the uh, council administrator to, uh, the, Jennifer Jenkins, to uh, move that forward in that, because right now, everything right now, we're consumed with budget, with the different agencies, everything and so forth. So now they would have to plug you all in because right now we're in the middle of, you know, they're getting information from the agencies as to their um, their budget needs and budget requests and questions indeed from the council themselves. But so, isn't this a budget question? I mean, this is yeah, this a budget. Yeah, this is a budget thing. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not saying it's not. What I'm saying mm -hmm. is, I think that um, some communication to the. Uh, to the county council administrator because they're the administrator for the county council. In other words, scheduling and things of that nature, moving that Okay, forward. I see what you're saying. Okay, so I, that's all so, I'm saying. I'm not saying yeah. you can't do it. I'm just saying that this is the way that you would do. So to that end, um, two things. Um, and and Ms. Diane Williams, um, Commissioner Diane Williams, I'm gonna come back to you too uh, in regards to any uh, additional things you wanna strike out of the letter. And then I'm going to go to um, commissioners to teacher, but two things. I know that we, and we can talk about it again, but the suggestion was to remove the we are disappointed portion part of this letter to remove that line. And to teacher, I'm coming to you. We, that, that The recommendation was to remove just that at this point. Um, and then I need you guys to look over this letter and see anything else that you would want to add or change. Additionally, um, Ms. Warner Wiggins, if you could send a request and you could CC the whole board um, on there to say that to, to Ms. Um, Jenkins requesting that we be allowed to present um, before the conclusion of the budget cycle on um, the Fair Election Commission and our, our findings and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And if that could be done this week as well. Um, because it's probably, it's, you know, they, they have to make a decision before May 31st. Okay. Um, Satitra, Commissioner Satitra. 
Yeah, uh, maybe we could change the language from we are disappointed to we are concerned. Um, so I have a couple of- That's still, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you go, but that's still going to reach a conclusion. Attorney Maddox wants us to not reach a conclusion. And if we say we are concerned that this was presented as such, it's the, that, it's the, that this was presented as such that reaches a conclusion is what right. he's saying. So uh, a couple of things. Our concern, I mean, so first of all, I think we did not get this number of 2 million that we requested. It didn't come out of thin air. It came from the two fiscal analyses that were done by council staff right. for the two previous bills, uh, CB99 and CB76. So to sort of express, um, I mean, and so that that number was not only not met, but there was no discussion with us on our recommendation and what is currently in the budget. So our, at least my concern is that if candidates choose to run publicly financed with what we currently have or will have in the budget, they will find that the amount of money they each receive will be cut to what is currently in the budget. And that, from my perspective, is not a good way to start a program. And we're asking people to make a commitment now, by the end of June, some section of the people um, with a limited amount of um, money in the budget. So I, I think that is the urgency for our letter. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and that is the reason for the other calculations that have gone into it, saying, uh, I mean, how do you start a program that covers the executive and 11 council members by only funding three people, right? And I mean, I don't understand how that is done, but that is a concern. And that is what, at least from my perspective, I'm trying to articulate. Well, I, I, and, and what, I, what I'm saying is, is in the communication, um, uh, if, if the concern is based on, and it seems that um, there's been no decision per se, there was a, uh, there was a conversation during the committee. Um, uh, and all it, only thing I wanna make sure is, hey, um, you advocating for your budget is one thing, but I would not want to um, have in there a conclusory because no conclusion has been met yet. Okay, so uh, I, I, so I, I hear I, you. I hear you. Um, I hear you, Attorney Maddox. I think so. I think what I hear both of you saying is this. So attorney Maddox, I feel like what I hear you saying is you should not have read, you should not have a conclusionary statement in regards to this letter around what was presented mm -hmm. um, in uh, the other day. What right. I hear from, okay, agreed. What mm -hmm. I hear from Satitra is that there can be a conclusion drawn to if this is not fully funded and what this looks like not fully funded with this short amount of turnaround time for people to decide to be utilizing the fair election fund. And that is something that we want to emphasize um, within the letter, um, separate of drawing a conclusion from the presentation. Okay. And I think what, okay. yeah, and I think what Commissioner Satitra is talking about is something that we've talked about, you know, with, with your approval mm -hmm. uh, several times over, just, yeah. hey, if this isn't fully funded, this is right. what this looks this like. This is what it looks like. No, and right. that's fine. And that's fine. And like I said, uh, you know, uh, approaching uh, Jennifer about having a meeting with the council members may be able to clear the air, right. at least with respect to, hey, this is what we this is what we have found based on these analyses and so forth and so on that is necessary to make this a viable program moving forward. That's an advocacy that any agency that comes in front of, of the council during the budget period would make. So that's not a problem. Okay. And that's, that's what I'm you know, right. looking at. Uh, okay. That's what I would uh, like to see in the letter. Commissioner Smith. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Smith had his hand up and then I'll come to you. Thank you. Um, 
So I think it's important to let her go out as soon as possible mm -hmm. and that it can, it, <clears throat> it should be addressed to the uh, county executive, to the county council and copied to the senior administration Council, people county council office administrator. of finance. Co yeah, yeah and count, council, council administrator. administrator and like office of finance. So the people that are the chain of command through which our budget gets presented, those folks need to be copied in as well um, so that they're clearly a well aware of our position and understand it and can defend it or at least explain it um, better than has been done. Because, and so I think we can offer in the letter to do a briefing and meet in any, you know, any way that would be helpful. Um, and then I, I think getting it out, that's the main thing. Yeah, and but I, I do want to add, though, that yeah. I do want to add, though, I looked last night. I spent a long time. I reviewed the tape and it was clearly stated multiple times that three point six five million. Two million this year was identified by the commission as what is needed for the program, needed mm -hmm. for the program. Mm -hmm. And I think it's what we're doing with the letter is we're saying uh, there's a misunderstanding. We didn't, we're saying that was an optimal amount based upon recommendations we had at the time mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. two people for each one. That's an optimal thing. It's not saying if we don't get that that the program will not work and be a failure. And that is what, regardless of what was said, that is the perception and that is the political angle that some in the council are using. There are some that clearly look to deep six the $400,000 and that in my mind will kill the program. So we need to understand, we don't need to put all that language in the letter but we need to understand that's where what's out there and we need to have a you know uh, uh, this is a way to address that in i think a diplomatic and right. cordial way uh, yeah but i guess my question is this at this function at this juncture now the the county exec already submitted their budget submitted her budget to the county council at this juncture it, the ball is in the county council's court. So really the audience you need right now is the county council. That's why I'm bringing up the county council administrator. Okay. Uh, the, if anything, this, this correspondence should go to, to that person in an attempt to set up a meeting or a briefing for uh, budgetary wise because that's what you want, you right? You you want an opportunity to advocate well, for your budget, correct? Well, it could be, be CC to her. But yeah, it could be right. CC to her. her. If, if we don't get that, the executive yeah. on the council. If we don't get the meeting, yeah. we we still want this letter to go right. to them. This is the explanation right. of okay. our argument. Yeah. And so, but I agree. It could it could go to you know the, the them and but I mean we it's fine with me to CC the county executive and have it more directed as as you're saying to the council and the council administrator, that's right. Fine. But yeah, I guess my thing is that right now, because it's in the posture it is in front of the county council, uh, your audience right now is with them. Not saying it's not. I mean, like I said, uh, have it to the county executive, county council, and, and mm -hmm. but as far as scheduling, um, something, it's going to have to go through the county council administrator. I mean, we can. Administrator. So the so letter can go out the way you have, I mean, can go out yeah. to the county executive, county council, you know, you know, chair, chair and members of the county council. But usually what it would be is to the county count, to the county executive uh, and the county council chair. And then, of course, yeah. it all filters from the chair yeah. to the other members and you go. Yeah, well, yeah, no, we'll send this. We'll we'll send this to to Jennifer and and request to her. like. I feel like there's two different correspondences going to happen. We're going to request to Jennifer that we can get in front of the council and and have a meeting and explain what we what we're talking about. But mm -hmm. then this is going to go to it can CBCC to Jennifer, but it's going to everybody. It's mm -hmm. going to the the county executive and the chair and the rest of the county council members. 
um, Com Commissioner Williams? Uh, yeah, but what I'm I, saying I, is when you when you submit to the county <laughs> council chair, the chair then distributes to the other members. I'm just letting mm -hmm. you know that's that's how it works. That's why we even have a council chair because mm -hmm. they're they're the head. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you send it to the county executive, you send it to the county council chair. The county council chair will make sure it's distributed to the uh, the other members. So I think we would prefer to send it to the entire council, just as we sent the. Budget. I understand what you're saying, but I'm just trying to let you know what the protocol and what I'm going to run into if that were to happen. Okay. Well, the, the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to make sure that we get Commissioner Williams. That's first off. Before we do, I want to say this. We did this before that exact way. Mm -hmm. And no one has come back to us and said that you ran into an issue because we didn't follow protocol. I don't, I don't know if that did happen, but we sent this before. We sent this to the county executive, the chair, and the county council members. And this did, and, and no one has come back to us and said that, that there was an issue with the way that we did that communication. Um, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you continuing um, educating us on the policies and procedures, and we definitely want to follow them as much as possible. I also will put the caveat that since we did it this way before, and and we're at this juncture in regards to what the county council has been has been given with information. I think we'd feel more comfortable just continuing to do it the way that we had did it before. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't do negate. That, if you do yeah. that, go ahead and do that. But okay. just remember, remember when you do that, inform okay. the 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 county council administrator that I said do it that particular other way. Because sure. and, I want to make we, sure I don't get any blowback. Sure. And, we can make we can make sure she knows that. We can make sure that we that she knows we did it the other way before and we didn't they didn't seem to have an issue what um, way, commissioner williams what, what way are you say, saying do it because we really don't want to do anything to violate uh no, I, 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 i'm just saying I, I, as an attorney i give advice all day exactly. now people are free to take it or free, people are free not to take it right what i was saying was you send it to the county executive you send it to the county council chair county council chair that's how i've always known it to be then they make sure the other county council members do it. You all did it the other way, but I'm just saying I want for the record that I suggested to do it the way I asked. Okay. That's all. Uh, Madam President, can we have an off call about that? I don't think we should circumvent what he's asking us to do. We may have did it that way before, but I need you to kind of revisit that thought. I mean, it's going to get to the right people. I think we need to follow of what the uh, council is telling us to do. But I, I heard uh, someone use this said argument. This is not an argument. That's why we don't want to send this document looking like it's an argument. I think Dan made the statement, our argument. It's not our argument. Oh, it's no, our it's, a, it's your advocacy. You're advocating for your budget. You're advocating well, no, for your budget. Uh, no, yeah, no. let's yeah, no. go ahead, Commissioner Williams. Okay. So I want to make sure that we present it as advocating for the budget. And the, and the importance of why we want to do it. But um, to indicate about we're disappointed and all like that, I'm glad you decided that you're going to strike that from it because we want to approach it in a positive manner, not in a negative manner. Uh, manner. And for uh, someone to say our argument kind of blew me away. It's not an argument. We're not here to argue. We're here to resolve the issue and hopefully they will understand why we want the uh, for, uh, additional four hundred thousand uh, dollars. We really wanted one million and something. We didn't get it, but if we have a meeting, maybe we can bring that. We will bring that up at the meeting. That this is how we presented it. Right. But but to go at it the way we're going at it, I don't think we should do that. It doesn't represent us getting anything resolved. We're here on the same team, the Fair mm -hmm. Election Funds Commission. Uh, uh, the county executive and the county council, and we right. need to try to get this resolved and get it resolved in our favor. But if right. we kind of keep thinking arguments and this and that, it'll never get resolved. So, if Madam President, if you can just rethink that, please, and rethink the fact that we would take his suggestion. It's his suggestion. I would not want it to go on record that we decided that we're not going to take 
a recommendation from legal counsel just to send a letter. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Dan, I see your hand up. Did you want to say something? Okay. All right. So a couple of things. So a couple of things. We have, I wanted to, to, to wrap this up around 830. And I think that we'll still be able to do that. I think we need to talk about the substance of the letter and what we want to change and what we want to add. Additionally, I want to be mindful that we are all different people approaching this subject in different ways. And I want to be respectful of sometimes it's just a manner of semantics. What one person is saying and using the term arguing for can be equivalent to their feelings around the word of advocating. And I understand, I will say, I understand the, the perspective of not the, the different words not landing the same for different people. I respect that. I definitely hear what you're saying, Commissioner Williams. And I want to uplift that, you know, I can understand how hearing arguing gives the impression that we are in here in a debate, in a battle, <laughs> you know, for something. And the same breath, I can definitely understand um, Commissioner uh, Smith's position in using that term in regards to advocating for our position passionately in context to the amount of funding that we had. So I just kind of wanted to give that perspective to the semantics of that particular word while also honoring um, something that you've highlighted. Um, we can come back to the conversation around sending the letter um, in email. I will say this, the letter needs to be sent. The letter needs mm -hmm. to be sent expeditiously. Mm -hmm. I will go on record and say that I am concerned about all of the members of the county council receiving this letter mm -hmm. um, in an expeditious manner once we send it. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's fair to say that that is the concerns of other members and is why the request was to send it to the, count the other county council members directly. Um, I don't think I would be doing a good job if I didn't uplift everyone's concerns while still being understanding to what everyone is saying. I hear you, Commissioner Williams, in relation to um, not wanting to go against legal counsel. He's on here for a reason. He has a law degree. Um, he's been very helpful in a lot of our conversations, and I do appreciate lifting that up. But I wouldn't be doing anyone any justice by not lifting up the fact that there are legitimate concerns about all members of the council receiving this letter in a timely manner to clearly articulate the ex the need and the expediency of our concerns. Um, that being said, whew, let's look at the letter. <laughs> let's get down any language that we wanna add, change, move about or whatever may have you because we got about nine minutes, ladies and gentlemen. And then we're going to go into, once we agree on that, we're gonna go into we're gonna to have to move the future meeting schedule. We'll move that to um to, to next month. That's fine. Um, let's move that to next month. Um, then we'll close it out from there. Um, so can we all take a look at this letter right now? Mm -hmm. Talk about the substance, talk about anything you would like to change. And then we know that we are going to approve this letter tonight and that it, we wanted to send it out this week. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. May I ask that you ask the other members to participate or get their opinion of it? Because it seems like uh, I don't want to kind of cut anyone off. Yes, I, I, uh, the commissioners, I will say this, the commissioners have full range to provide input as they see fit. I don't want to, I feel like if, I feel like they're all adults. If they wanted to say something or didn't want to say something, they have the full range to give their um, input on the floor. Um, it is on the screen. Um, what I will say is that we are going to vote on this. So it, when we come to the vote, uh, you know, if you haven't said anything by that time, but you have issues with the letter, that's a concern. Um, I know Commissioner Tolson is looking it over. I know Commissioner Nelson and Commissioner Jackson, um, as well as the other commissioners are looking it over right now. So I just want to give like a minute or so. And at this time, uh, if you guys have anything you want to change, please let us know. 
I just want to ask one question. What is it that you want to convey? You want to say that we should have been a part of the conversation. And so that I'm a, the, we should have been a part of the conversation, but that is not the purpose. That is not the purpose of this letter. Okay. That is, that, that's definitely not the purpose of this letter because I feel like to the point that Commissioner Williams said, that might be a little bit more confrontational than okay. we are looking for. Um, this letter is to say, hey, there was a presentation. There were things said in this presentation. We want to make sure that it is very clear and reaffirm our position and advocate what we are asking for. Um, and then also saying, look, we asked for this and y'all gave, we, we asked for the moon and y'all gave us two that, stars. Isn't that what you do with budgets? You ask for the moon and you hope to get 10% of it. No, that's not what I do with budgets. <laughs> when I ask, when I, <laughs> when I ask for money, I'm asking for money. Um, I'm not asking for it to, to get, to get it chopped and screwed. Now it can be an expectation, but that's not what I'm asking for. I, I will say that. I, I respect that there was a difference. And I think this letter is articulating that. Like, mm -hmm. hey, we asked for this. We're getting this. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure we don't cut the minimum that you are giving us. That's what this letter is articulating. Mm -hmm. While still saying, while still saying, as a teacher, I'm coming right to you as soon as Commissioner Tolson is, is completed. While still saying, hey, okay, you're giving 400K this year, but for this to really work, you guys need to give a little bit more for the next year. Okay, it, it it does come over as it could be construed as confrontational, uh, just by the strong language. Uh, but you do want to advocate for yourself. I just and I, no, I didn't watch the video or anything, so I don't you know because maybe there's some context that I missed there. Um, but I think I'm okay with it. Uh, I you know that we are disappointed. Uh, cause I, we're removing that, that yeah. we, we all are. Saying, in I would see yeah. that as a poke. If someone sent me that, I'd be like, what? So I, okay. <laughs> yeah. We're removing that. Yeah, that's okay. the, that's what we all agreed. That was, that was the strong language that we removed. Um, I mean. <laughs> okay. Commissioner, the teacher. Yeah. Should, I mean, just to, on that last point, maybe we could change it to, we are concerned, but I, I mean, the, the point I wanted to make was this public financing uh, legislation was passed by a vote of 10 to 1 in October 2023, uh, which is different from the original legislation, which was passed by a vote of 5 to 4 at 1 a.m. in the morning in 2018. So this council has had the ability to look through this legislation and 10 people voted for it and only one person opposed it. So given that, I think our expectation is that there will be support for funding it just a few months after they all voted for it. And we are surprised that the $2 million that we recommended is now being explained as something that we came up with when in fact what we were doing is simply take the fiscal analyses that was done by the, by the county staff and use that amount to come up with the total that both the analyses in 2018 and 2023 did, which is to say, if we fund fully fund two people for each seat, this will be the cost. Now, if you don't fund it, and there are too many people who run for it, everybody's money gets cut. So you're trying to run a campaign with one leg cut off. And that's not fair for the program. It's not fair for good democracy. And it's not fair for the intent that this is put into place. So the amount that is currently budgeted is only 400,000 compared to our ask of 2 million. But as the letter states, what is it that we can do with the 400 that was allocated last year and the 400 that is allocated this year? And that's what we're trying to say so that there are no future cuts because, I mean, let me be very frank, and I know this is an official meeting, but the one person who objected vociferously and made statements about it is the one person who did not support the bill when it passed. Mm -hmm. So there are 10 other people on the council who have supported it, and we're appealing to them to say, if funds are not adequate, this and this is our job, it's not a good look for the county to have a publicly financed program in which candidates are trying to run with less 
than the person who is getting money through the non-publicly financed process from large donors, from deep pockets. The reason we're doing this is to promote better democracy in the county. And so if there's agreement among the council and the executive that that is the process, then we as a commission are expressing concern about the shortfall, but also saying, this is, this is how you would use the money and this is what this money will fund, right? Yeah. And so I mean, that's sort of the the I mean, the reason for phrasing it the way that we phrased it, if that helps. I think um, let me go to Commissioner Dan, but let me also say that we're going to vote on this soon. Um, go ahead, Commissioner Dan. OK, so. Um, I think a, a lot of what just Suchita presented is is good context and background. Um, I think that and the point for me is not the presentation that was made at the committee hearing. The point is the perception right now in, I think the council that $400,000 is not enough to make a difference. And so if it's not enough to make a difference, why are we thinking at all? We should move that money that program that would have more impact. So I think what we are facing is, and what we have to speak to is we, we affirm that we support the $400,000 and that we in no way should include that the program that, that that's a waste or that we can't get to a successful program with $400,000. And so the letter has a scenarios that lay out how the program can be a success short of a $2 million contribution this year. And I think that's, that's the point. And we need to give all the council the arguments for retaining the 400,000 so that those who are opposing it can't use our recommendation for two million against us okay um so uh commissioner nelson said change here's why it counts to here's why this matters um two things and then we're going to vote um the the first thing is i i think commissioner dan really outlined the reason for this letter there was a presentation the presentation gave information that while we're not drawing a conclusion, it, it seems based on the, the video that there was a conclusion drawn in regards to how much money we were asking for and how this would affect the program, things of that nature. And what we are doing is reaffirming our position and um, really advocating for the 400,000. Um, in context to what Commissioner teacher said, um, I'll say this. Everything that she said is important and is very good context that needs to be reaffirmed. I will say, because I see my, my buddy over here in the right-hand corner, left-hand corner, I will say that one thing that I learned growing up from my dad was, you can say anything you want, it's just how you say it. And I think that the message that Satich, the commissioner said teacher is bringing I do think it's valuable. And I do think if we get in front of them, it's something that we're going to have to provide as context as we get in this conversation. And I, and we will find a way, us together, us, us together, to say it in a manner that is not confrontational or not perceived as confrontational. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, you know, you could say the color is green. And just because you say the color is green definitively, definitively it's implied that you're being confrontational, but we will find a way to communicate exactly what Commissioner Satitra is saying and what Commissioner Dan is saying um, if, if and when we get in front of the council in a manner that's not confrontational, but reaffirms the context and the advocacy of what we are asking for. That being said, let's go ahead and have a vote on what we see right now so that we can get this letter out. Um, I will say that I, Go ahead, teacher. You came off mute. No, I didn't have anything to say. Okay. Um, I will say that I 
I do I do hear you, Commissioner Williams, on the point of following Attorney Maddox statements. And I also hear Commissioner Dan in regards to making sure that the entire council has this letter so that talking points aren't lost. So those are both very strong um, things to consider. But let, at this point, right now, let's vote on the letter itself. And I'm then we can, go ahead, go ahead, Commissioner Tolson. I, I was gonna move, mm -hmm. make a motion, however you wanna call it. I move that we uh, accept the letter with the stated changes um, we're for moving that we are disappointed line. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, that letter has been uh approved, and then we'll make a decision. Um, I'll I'll send an email out. We'll talk about it a little bit more, and we'll make a decision via email about the way that we want to disseminate it by tomorrow. Um. And and I do, like I said before, I'm definitely taking into um, consideration the statements on both um, on both sides. Um, but we'll make a decision that is in the best. How many eyes did we have? You said what, ma'am? How many eyes did we have? Um, I think all, including you. I know I said I. Uh, Ms. Jackson came off mute and said I. The teacher said I. Dan said I. Uh, Commissioner Williams said I. Did you say I, Commissioner Nelson? I did not. Okay. Are you abstaining or are you voting against it so that we can have that for the record? I'm against it as written. Okay. What what would you like to change? Um there's some I mean it's not major, but um I, I don't think that it's ready as written, as formatted. Okay. Okay. They took um, out the we are disappointed. I mean, that 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 sentence is gone. So is that what you were concerned about? There was a line in there. It was seen incomplete. I didn't know if it was um going if it was going to be a heading. And Which the scenario section, I didn't know if those were bullets. So okay. if we are presenting it to the council and the county executive, I would like to see it presented in a final version before we have a formal vote. Okay. 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 And where's the where where where's that part that you were concerned about? The heading. The heading. It said funding impact scenarios, and then it went into fund amount in 2026, number of campaign supported, then it had like A, B, C. Okay, so you're, okay, so. So I didn't know if we had like scenarios we were putting in there or if those were the actual, like I wasn't clear on that, but. The funding impact scenarios are the fund amount in 2026 of campaign supported dash A, B, and C. Appropriating as much or more to the fund next year would have a greater impact as shown in the following scenarios. And then funding impact scenarios, uh, funding amount in 2026, number of candidates supported. And it goes to the different scenarios by that. Yeah, so what it's saying is if we had 1,250,000, we could support four district council, one at large, one executive candidate. So fully, fully match. So that those are the three scenarios. Got it. So can you move the funding impact scenario? Can I guess maybe clean it up a little bit to make those to be bullet point? No, we got to leave A, B, and C because that ties into, um, I think we said scenario b at some point in this conversation or did we i think c, c is what yeah. fully funds one person for each yeah person. can thrive it can be a failure to start on, 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 on. yeah you know, I want to so, call so scenario a scenario b scenario c so they're actually following that okay well they so okay so right where it says a b c we could just put scenario a scenario b scenario c we'll add those changes 
Um, you want to move um, funding. We can remove funding impact scenarios and then move it up because we're saying appropriating as much to fund next year would have a greater impact as shown in the following scenarios. So we're already saying that the following scenarios are coming. So we can remove funding impact scenarios. Let's remove that. Um, and then let's take out fund amount in 2026. Can, well, um, funding impact scenarios. Let's take that line and put it um, in the following scenarios for fund amount in 2026. Does that make sense? 2026. Does that make sense? So take that line where it says fund amount in 2026 and put that at the end of following scenarios. Um, I'm not sure I quite understand. You said put it at the end of this following scenarios. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to clean it up and then take number of campaigns supported and put it at the end as well. I'm going to clean it up. It's going to make sense in one second. Okay. Um, and so it'll say appropriating as much or more to the fund next year would have a greater impact as shown in the funding scenarios um, in, in the funding scenarios below. for the fund amount in 2026. And then you'll put like the um, dash after 2026, and then you can remove um, number of campaigns supported. Um, and then bring the scenario up to, for the, I guess the, the blocking. Um, that dash has to go right after the 2026. Otherwise, it looks kind of weird. Okay. Um, Commissioner Nelson, does, does this kind of address the issues that you have brought up in regards to the format and language of the letter? Um, yeah, it could be. I, um, I mean... It's it's always going to be something, but it's okay. Okay. Um, let's just get, let's let's get a vote for this, and then let's move forward. Can we just delete that? We are disappointed since we since you made changes. Just de de delete that whole sentence, please. Thank you. Let's just say get that out of there. All right, let's 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 go ahead and vote. Let's say good night, ladies and gentlemen. I know. Um, <laughs> do I have a motion to accept this letter as is to move forward to send out to county executive and the county council or the county um the county uh chair? I move that we accept the letter with the stated additions. Okay. Uh do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor, raise your hand, say aye. Do something aye. to indicate. Aye. 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 <laughs> Commissioner Nelson, are you in support or abstain or? Aye. All right. So that's unanimous then, right? It's unanimous. Okay. It's unanimous. Okay. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 840. I'm going to see y'all next month, but probably before then, since we'll probably go before the county council. Uh, I'll send a letter. Oh, wait, wait. Commissioner Di Diane Williams, yes, ma'am. Diane Williams, yes, ma'am. Just before you sign off, I want you to revisit that uh, question about how you send it out, okay? With the, based on oh, the yeah. We're yeah, we're gonna. I'm I'm revisiting it. I'm gonna okay. send a I'm gonna send a letter out in the morning, and then we'll talk about it more. But I I see your point, okay. and I see I see um Commissioner Smith's point as well as well. So um I'm trying to if you do, if you haven't learned by now, I'm always trying to find the middle ground. So right now my mind <laughs> is really trying to wrap my mind around a middle ground. That's all I'm trying to do for right now. So I'm gonna get some sleep on it and figure it out. Um, okay. seeing That's how we can. Yes. I said, thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, you're welcome. Thank um, you. All right, y'all. I'm going to see y'all in June. We're going to work it out. And then I'll probably see y'all in May because hopefully we get in front of the county council. I'll send you a letter in the morning. We'll send all this out later this week. Do I have a motion to end this meeting at 842? Motion to adjourn. Can I have a second, please? 
Second. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. See y'all. Thank you, everyone. Thank y'all. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.